Chapter 321 I Am Batman Devil Island After killing Ares and taking away his power, the entire magical power of Devil Island was also controlled by Dane. The Amazons in this world were created by Ares, so legally their souls should be under the control of Ares. This is also one of the laws of Western theology. Creation should obey the Creator. So when Ares lifted the seal, Hippolyta didn't dare to resist him at all. He wanted to kill the Amazon Queen, and Hippolyta had no choice but to kill her at her neck. The same situation applies to Dane. Being able to kill Ares and use Ares's battle axe on Devil Island, where the strong is respected, Dane is naturally the legal ruler. At the moment, the new ruler was sitting in the temple, watching the syndicate picture displayed by the magic crystal. That's right, all the syndicate's actions against Zanza were seen by Dane. At the critical moment, Night Owl's stealth plane malfunctioned because of his own manipulations. Devil Island has been using magic to monitor the outside world. Although they cannot leave the island because they need to guard the Seal of Ares, they have never given up their ambitions for the outside world. The reason why the Super Queen left Devil Island was apparently because Hippolyta wanted her to become a qualified king and come back with her own army. Speaking of which, I would like to introduce that the method of succession to the throne of Devil Island is also through throne challenge, but it is more cruel. Only when the winner of the challenge kills another competitor can she be considered to have full rights to the throne. So if the Super Queen wants to come back to inherit the throne, then she must come back with her army and kill Hippolyta. The challenge to the throne is not limited to one-on-one -on -one duels. Legion battles are also a competition method allowed by the rules. Hippolyta used her status as queen to gather the power crystals of the entire Amazon to fight against the Super Queen. Even a Super Queen can't kill everyone single-handedly. Otherwise, when she takes the throne, she won't have anyone available to her. What's the point of being a queen? So they made a three-part agreement, and the Super Queen went to the human world to gather her own army. If she could defeat Hippolyta with an upright military force, then she would be the new Amazon Queen. The Amazons believe in ruthlessness and coldness, and this agreement means that the Super Queen must kill Hippolyta the next time she returns. The Super Queen is now a member of the Syndicate, and she actually has the ability to come back to seize the throne. But in fact, Hippolyta had other plans. A Devil Island was simply not worthy of being occupied by the Super Queen and those Superman types. Her real plan is to kill Ares with the help of the Super Queen and the Syndicate and lift the mountain that has shrouded the Amazons for thousands of years. By then, even if Hippolyta dies in the end, the Super Queen will definitely be able to lead the Amazons to kill the world and occupy the vast land of the human world. It has to be said that even though the queens of the two worlds have different personalities, they are exactly the same in terms of their selfless treatment of the race. Dane was thinking that if Devil Island's culture of advocating fearlessness, ruthlessness, and lack of mercy could be corrected and love, justice, and honor could be introduced, then it might become another paradise island. Diana thinks so too, so during this time, she has been working hard to correct the bad habits of Devil Island, retrain the Amazons in the way of Paradise Island, and enjoy Thuplis. However, Earth-3 is a world where good does not suppress evil. It is not easy for Devil Island to change their habits in a short time. If no one on the entire island could defeat Diana, and she did fight bravely and help the Amazons defeat the army of war demons, these violent women would have rebelled long ago. But even so, many people still come, eat a Hippolyta, every day to complain, saying that Diana always instills some strange ideas in them. Hippolyta could only come to remind Dane in a very subtle way, hoping that he could take care of Zeus's daughter. Dane was helpless, and for the sake of sex, he had to sit on Diana's side. However, when Diana knew that there were still people who dared to complain, she drilled those people even harder. The intensity of the training she gave the Amazons was something she herself could bear. So even if the Amazons who wanted to be strong felt bitter in their hearts, they would never say anything about it because they couldn't afford to embarrass that person. She's so positive. Zatanna is now almost becoming a professional medical staff on Devil Island. 
Amazons who are injured due to fatigue from training every day are always sent to her. Do you feel that she looks a bit like Antiope now? Zatanna has also met Antiope. When fighting against the demon-like army, she saw with her own eyes the rigor and meticulousness of this female general in running the army. Diana's look now looks so much like the Antiope Zatanna saw at that time. Dane smiled when he heard this. Diana is a student of Antiope. Zatanna suddenly realized, no wonder. Speaking of which, Zatanna may be the most popular among the three of them. No one will be offended by the Amazons but the doctors and nurses, so Zatanna has a very high status in Devil Island. As for Dane, he is basically sitting in the temple as an aloof god. The Amazons on Devil Island found that their lives had hardly changed except for the addition of ten more devil coaches. Dane did not treat and torture the people in the occupied areas as slaves like those conquerors in history, nor did he get involved in Hippolyta's rule. He didn't even do anything outrageous to the women of the conquered lands like the conquerors in history. During the period when the Roman Empire conquered the European continent, it was also a period of great integration of local ethnic groups, which Hippolyta had already seen frequently. Even in modern times, humans only seem to have become more civilized, but they are still no different from beasts in this regard. Hippolyta is not opposed to the integration of bloodlines, but she hopes that the Amazons can at least give birth to strong offspring. Humans are obviously not a good choice. She hoped that Dane could be more debauched and leave some precious demigod blood to the Amazons, but unfortunately, he didn't seem to have this ambition. She had been getting along with Dane for a while, so she had some understanding of this man's temperament, so she asked bluntly, My lord, why did you come to this world? She tentatively said, if you want to conquer the world, I think we at Amazon can help you. Ares is dead, and they Amazons can completely convert to Dane, the new god. In this way, if Dane really conquers the world, it will be similar to how they Amazons conquered the world. Dane glanced at the woman and said with a hint, I know what you are thinking, but in my future plan, the Amazons do not conquer the world. Just do your own thing, Hippolyrus. Into it, Ares has not forgiven you for your betrayal, don't think that I have such kindness. Hippolyta was warned and could only lower her head deeply. Yes, sir. Dane quickly looked away, confused. Although they were not the same person, she was the mother-in-law. He returned his sights to the magical crystal ball, a magical object found on Devil Island that allowed Dane to see what he wanted to see. Therefore, he can not only see the Syndicate, but also Batman and Red Hood in Gotham, Plastic Man in Detroit, the Flash in Central City, and Green Lantern in Beach City. Vixen, Dr. Light, New York. All members of Zheng Lian are learning about this country and this world in their own way, and they are learning about the syndicate organization through the mouths of people around them. Dane also noticed that Barry Allen has no idea by Hat Low Key is. He has become a superhero again in Central City. He is worthy of being the conscience of the Justice League. Your kindness will never be erased in any world. He set his sights on Gotham again. The Red Hood had already clashed with the local court of owls and began to clean up the city's evil in his own way. The gangs in Gotham City felt that they were in danger. The court of owls is chasing the Red Hood, but no one can contact their leader, Dick Claw. He and Batman were staying in Wayne Manor, watching the evidence collected by outsiders about the murder of the Graysons by Night Owl. I don't know what the outsider's intention was, but Dane thought to himself that he might also have a small intention to take advantage of Night Owl. It's just that he doesn't understand how much weight Dick Grayson has in Night Owl's heart. Dane doesn't know how much weight he has in Night Owl's heart, but he knows that Dick has a very heavy weight in Batman's heart. Gotham, Wayne Manor School. Dick was silent as he looked at the evidence in front of him. Those photos those files and the clues left by outsiders who were personally involved, they are all here. Why Talon can never find the murderer, why the Court of Owls can never grasp the clues, and why he always encounters various problems when he personally investigates. Originally, he thought that it was just because it was so long ago that it was difficult to preserve evidence and clues. Now it seems that the problem is actually very simple because the person who committed the crime is Ye Xiao. Why? Dick muttered. 
Because of you. Batman stood silently behind him. Dick turned his head, no expression visible on his owl-like headgear. I? He needs someone he can trust absolutely. Who is more trustworthy than the children he raised by himself? Take Batman, for example. All the children he adopted are extraordinary. Although these children sometimes go against him, every one of them is reliable at critical moments. Even Damien, who is hated by everyone, is never ambiguous in the face of right and wrong. Night Owl also has similar needs, and as an ordinary person, an ordinary person who hangs out in a supervillain's nest like the Syndicate, he needs someone who can be absolutely trusted to sit in Gotham City, his rear area, to provide him with backup, support. So, you are trying to say that the reason why my parents died is because Yeshao took a fancy to my talents and because he felt that he could trust me absolutely. As Dick said this, he couldn't help but feel a burning rage burning in his heart. Don't let anger affect your sanity, Dick. It won't help. Batman reminded him. Dick suddenly asked at this time, What about you? What is your purpose? Before Batman could answer, Dick gave his own answer. You want to deal with Night Owl, right? So you want to get a breakthrough from me and disintegrate the enemy's power from within. It's a very smart approach. You almost compete with Night Owl. Just as smart. So, why are you targeting Night Owl? Personal grudge? Or, are you also eyeing this city? Even though Gotham is a lousy place, there are quite a few villains who like it. For most criminals, this is definitely a paradise for making money illegally. The Court of Owls is already the most orderly force here, so it is difficult to define Night Owl as a criminal here. He is indeed to some extent maintain order here. No matter how bad the order is, it is 10,000 times better than a chaotic society. It is because Talon believes this, that he willingly assists Night Owl. But this is wrong. Gotham shouldn't be like this. She can definitely become better. Batman said this, as always, the people here fully deserve a better life. Live. Although Batman's tone did not waver at all, Dick could feel the fiery emotion hidden behind his words, almost making Dick believe his words. But what he had seen and heard reminded him rationally that this was impossible. This is Gotham at its best, and it couldn't get any better. The city of Gotham is never in heaven or on earth. It just finds a relatively less bad location in the abyss of hell, that's all. You must be a Gothamite, but you must not be a Gothamite, Dick said. If he were not a Gothamite, he would not have such deep affection for this city. If he were a Gothamite, he would not have the slightest hope for such a city. Sometimes, we need a little faith. Dick, do you have faith? I have broken more necks than I have ever seen on a sunny day in Gotham. I am Talon, the Night Owl's Talon. Talon has no beliefs of its own. But now you have a choice, Dick. You don't have to be a Talon. You can be yourself. Dick was a little surprised. I thought you wanted to recruit me? I don't have to do that, you said. I'm dismantling your power from within. Did I fail? After Dick was silent for a moment, he shook his head again. Absolutely not. You succeeded. After knowing the truth, I can no longer work for Ye Xiao with peace of mind. It's just that I'm a little curious. It sounds like you want to transform this city. How do you want to do it specifically? I will do it my way. If you are still in this city, you will know. After saying that, Batman turned around. Dick stopped him. Wait, who are you? Batman turned his head. I am Batman. Chapter 322 The Flash Makes His Debut Again Night Owl's management of Gotham City is divided. Claw Dick is only responsible for managing city security, counterintelligence, and super ability related matters, while things related to people's livelihood and municipal administration are managed by another group of Night Owl's subordinates. These people are basically the original high level government officials. After Ye Xiao took over the city, they also became his minions. But unlike the Talons, these bureaucrats who help Night Owl manage people's livelihood and economy are a group based on interests. Night Owl usually exchanges interests with these guys in the name of Thomas Wayne Jr. and does not end up as Night Owl. This resulted in him not being so intimidating in these groups, but in the past Night Owl didn't care about this kind of thing. Because Wayne Group and themselves are a united front, and the Court of Owls led by Claw Dick is the Sword of Damocles hanging above their heads. With the supervision of these two, no one dares to make mistakes. Therefore, 
as long as the claws are there, even if the night owl is thousands of miles away, he is not worried about a fire in the backyard. But now the claws are on strike. In the Court of Owls, Claw Dick is the only one who can contact Night Owl. Others may be able to contact Thomas Wayne Jr., but they don't know the relationship between the two. Therefore, after Dick's disappearance, the Court of Owls has become a mess. The reason for their chaos is related to the legend that recently appeared in Gotham City. Someone saw a huge amount of bat flying through the night sky late at night, and he was catching all lawbreakers. At first, no one cared, because the arrested people were all sent to the GCPD door the next morning. Everyone in Gotham didn't know that in this city, the police and gangsters were one family, so these people were released on the spot. But the next day, the released criminals and the police officers who released them were caught together and thrown at the door of the police station. This time, everyone understood that someone was provoking Gotham's order. People have different opinions on this matter. Some people are very excited, some people are watching indifferently, some people have nothing to do with it, and some people are closely concerned about it. They knew that the third day would be the key because the Court of Owls would take action. So everyone outside the police station was released again. Soon the time came to the third day. This time, not only were the people arrested before, but there were also a few new faces. People don't know who they are but people know that they have a unified name called Claw, the Claw of the Night Owl, and they belong to the Court of Owls. The Talons appear here, and this is the 27th time that the people of the Court of Owls are exposed in broad daylight. Once the mystery is lost, people will be less afraid of the Court of Owls. Although there is not enough sunshine in Gotham City due to its proximity to the metropolis, this scene still allows the citizens of Gotham to see a glimmer of sunshine that they have not seen for a long time. The bureaucrats and capital groups that were originally suppressed by the Court of Owls have also undergone changes. They discovered that the Court of Owls was not unshakable, so they were ready to take action and seemed to be waiting for an opportunity to take back control of the city. Therefore, on the fourth day, the citizens of Gotham discovered a new change. The criminals who were thrown at the door of the police station were no longer released on the spot, but were escorted to prison. Aren't you afraid of the punishment of the night owls and the court of owls for doing this? The criminals being escorted shouted. The policemen who escorted him were a little frightened when they heard this and didn't know whether they should continue. But soon, a higher-ranking police officer came over and Slell apped the criminals on the head. Stop blabbering! Will ye stand up for you trash? When the policemen heard this, they instantly felt reassured, and they imitated the police officers and forced the criminals into the detention car. Some citizens saw this scene and gathered together to discuss in a low voice. They all felt that these police officers had taken the wrong medicine and dared to confront the gang. Not far from the GCPD, there was a cathedral. On the top of the church stood a figure that blended into the night, you want to cure the city in this way? Behind Batman, another deep voice sounded, and he knew without looking back that this voice came from Jason. He turned his face slightly, as if looking at the Red Hood with his peripheral vision. I know what you did in Crime Alley, Jason, and you're still fighting violence with violence? It works very well, at least better than your method. Red Hood disagreed. But Batman said, Maybe in our Gotham, yes, but in this Gotham, your method doesn't quite work. I don't think so. Red Hood was a little unconvinced. In our Gotham, the opponents we face are different from this Gotham. Here we are fighting another CD order. Red Hood knew what he meant. The Court of Owls. Batman nodded. It seems you know very well, yes, it is the Court of Owls. They control people's livelihood here. Their shadow can be seen in schools, hospitals, road administration, municipalities, and other government agencies. You can't kill them all. Red Hood frowned. He knew what Batman said was right. Sometimes, his opponents were not the most vicious criminals, but accomplices who were unable to resist and chose to follow blindly. They are part of the order of this city. Before an order is eliminated, a new order must be established and ready to replace it, 
otherwise the previous efforts will be in vain. Could it be that the original order was destroyed just to bring Gotham into anarchy? But how are you going to do it? Does this city still have the power to resist? Yes, Batman whispered. Red Hood raised his eyebrows and asked him, Who? I've been here for several days, but I didn't see anyone resisting the owl. You definitely can't see it because they're so hidden, they're the jokers. Red Hood made a gesture of picking his ears, and then asked, There seemed to be something wrong with my ears just now. Can you tell me again, what is it? Jokers, I know you heard me, I wasn't kidding. Batman finally turned around and faced the Red Hood. Don't forget, there are many things here that are opposite to our world, so in this world, the Jokers are a resistance organization, and they are the vanguard against the dictatorship of the Court of Owls. But I saw no signs of their activity. Red Hood recalled, making sure he had not seen anyone from the Jokers. Their leader Rigoletto was killed by Night Owl not long ago, so they must be licking their wounds recently and are hiding. And you found their hiding place, right? Red Hood asked. Batman nodded. It's just that I doubt whether they still have the courage to continue to stand up against the Court of Owls. Red Hood sneered and said, As long as the Owl has suffered enough losses, and as long as the Joker's desire for revenge is strong enough, they will have the courage. The people are always like this. Whoever wins, they help. After that, the Red Hood turned over and jumped off the church, disappearing in the blink of an eye. Only Batman is left, still looking down at Gotham. Central City Barry didn't know why, but ever since he met the Iris West of this world that day, he had been distracted. When he was a student, he had indeed admired Iris West from another world for a long time, but he had not seen her for a long time after graduation. And speaking carefully, the character of Iris in this world is somewhat different from that of her in another world. Barry didn't know how to describe it. He felt that this I, Riz was not so strong and seemed to be more reasonable. He felt that she seemed to understand him, but he was worried that all this was just his illusion. Barry, what are you wiping? Barry's attention was instantly drawn back to her, and he said a little embarrassedly, I'm thinking about where I should stay tonight. I don't know whether to say he was unlucky or what. Barry only used the money he got from Dane to stay in the motel for one day and then checked out because of his conscience. But his wallet was stolen on the day he left the hotel. He is the Flash, the fastest man in the world, and the bag in his pocket was taken away without anyone knowing. When Barry came to the place, agreed with Iris in frustration, she said firmly, They must have seen the cash on you at that time. Did you bring a lot of cash with you? Barry thought back to the whole stack of banknotes that Dane gave him at that time and said weakly, There should be a lot, probably tens of thousands of dollars. Seeing Iris's strange eyes, Barry's voice became quieter and quieter until it was almost imperceptible. I don't know what to say to you anymore. Iris covered his forehead. How can you be seen with so much money? It should be said that it's amazing that you are still alive. It seems that the other party cares about you. Show mercy. Barry looked horrified when he heard this. Why are the folk customs here so terrifying? The more he behaved like this, the more curious Iris became about him. Where did you come from? Where can one teach a child as pure as a little white lotus like Barry? I've already said that I grew up in Central City. It's just because you said that, that I don't believe it. Iris laughed so hard that she thought Barry looked very cute. He was different from the boys she had met before. He was not the kind of person who wanted to make love with her as soon as he saw her. So she rolled her eyes and suddenly wanted to test Barry's sincerity. So she said, Your money has been stolen. Why don't you just stay at my house for a while? Facing this invitation, Barry stammered instantly. Go, to your house. This, this is not good. CC Iris smiled again. This time she smiled even more happily. What's wrong? I remember you said that you studied at Central City University, and the school happened to be applying for a chemistry laboratory assistant recently. Your chemistry major, how's it going? It should be. Okay? Barry was a little unsure whether the chemical effects of the two worlds were consistent, and he also had a fatal question. I don't have a driver's license. Iris frowned slightly when he heard this. Then, do you remember your social security number? 
Barry remembered, but that one was for another world, so at the moment he could only shake his head. The United States does not have a household registration system or an ID card, so residents generally use their driver's license to prove their identity or their social security number. This number is one for each person and is used to pay for insurance and take the driver's license test. When looking for a job, renting a house, etc., its function is actually similar to that of an ID card. Iris knew at a glance that Barry was not telling the truth, but she didn't care. With Barry's appearance, he didn't look like a murderer who fled to Central City. Besides, even if that were the case, he should have defected to Johnny Quick instead of hanging around Central City University. So she whispered, I can find someone to help you make a false certificate. Guaranteed to be on the system, but the price will be a bit expensive. She talked about this like a familiar person, and for a moment Barry didn't know what to say. He discovered the difference between the two Iris. Just when he was about to return, a bus suddenly broke in from outside the coffee shop. It broke through the walls, doors, and glass, and the bus could not stop and headed straight towards I. Reese and Barry's lock, Asian. Iris showed a horrified expression, but Barry instantly entered the speed force, and everything around him suddenly seemed to have pressed the stop button. Barry quickly unfolded his battlesuit, and Flash kept it on his wrist in the form of a watch, ready for battle at any time. After coming into contact with Barry, Flash was also enveloped by the speed force, so the speed at which it unfolded was very fast, even from Barry's perspective, almost instantaneously. The battlesuit is online. Hello, Barry. Looks like you're having a bad date. This is not a date, Barry explained, and then asked quietly, Do you think this is it? From my perspective, yes. But Barry, you should probably focus on the incident at hand first. Well, I guess you're right. Barry concentrated. He carefully folded Iris's arms in front of his chest, then picked her up and moved her outside the cafe. Then he followed the same pattern, moving other customers and waiters from the cafe to outside the store, and rescued the passengers and driver in the bus. During his actions, many yellow lightning bolts shot out from him, but strangely, none of the arcs harmed the people he was trying to save, as if they all had eyes. Same. After Barry made sure everyone was safe, he returned to Iris, took back the battle suit, and exited the speed force. The play button was turned on again, and the bus rushed into the cafe. The fuel tank exploded in the cafe, and flames licked outwards. People outside the cafe started screaming like they were waking up from a dream. But a few minutes later, they discovered that they had arrived outside the coffee shop, and no one among them was injured. This is simply a miracle. Iris's frightened expression has not faded, and Barry is trying his best to comfort her. It's okay. Everything is okay, Iris. You are safe. He kept saying this until Iris threw herself into his arms, making him freeze. Chapter 323 The Imprisoned God of Craftsmen, the Irrational Divine Power Ring Devil Island, Dane followed Hippolyta's guidance to an active volcano on the island. The gods in this world are not completely extinct, nor have they hidden themselves in the new god realm like in another world. Some half-disabled gods chose another way to live among humans and hide in human society. Many Superman species on Earth-3 are actually the descendants of these surviving gods and some humans and are of demigod lineage. But on Devil Island, there is still a real god alive, and Dane has been fascinated by this one for a long time. He is Hephaestus, the god of fire. Walking into the depths of the volcano is the palace Hephaestus built for himself. It is not a magnificent place, but it is extremely grand and huge. Just like the kingdom under the mountain in The Hobbit, the dome of the palace is very high, as if it was prepared for giants. When Dane met the legendary god of craftsmen, he knew that this place was indeed prepared for giants. Hephaestus is very big, similar to the dwarf in Marvel Next Door, and his legs look a little different in length and length. Legend has it that when Hephaestus was born, his biological mother Hera threw him off Mount Olympus because she thought he was ugly, causing him to become lame. Dane doesn't know whether this was the case in the original world, but it seems to be the case in this world. Hephaestus seemed to sense a stranger approaching, and he turned his head to look at Dane. As soon as this face was exposed, well, it's not to blame that Hera didn't want to see it, 
and Aphrodite didn't want to. This guy is indeed extremely ugly. Can you imagine what an enlarged version of Gollum looks like? And Dane also noticed that around Hephaestus's body there were countless chains penetrating his skin, and the other ends were connected to the surrounding walls. Every time he moved, the chains on his body shook, making the sound of metal colliding. He is not living in seclusion here. He is being imprisoned here. Hephaestus squinted at Dane. He didn't like overly handsome men, but he was not stupid. The aftermath of the battle in the past few days had been transmitted to him. Devil Island never lets any man stay on the island unless the other person is a dead man or a conqueror. He guessed Dane must be the latter. I think you must be the man who defeated the Amazons. Are you here to find me, the loser? Dane did not speak, but took out a huge amount of head from somewhere and threw it to Hephaestus. It was the head of Ares, the god of war. At the moment, the head had turned as gray as stone, and the roaring expression still hung on his face, as if he was still unwilling to give up. The moment Hephaestus saw the head, he raised his leg and crushed Ares' head with one kick. Although there are many differences between the two worlds, those romantic deeds still happened. Aphrodite even gave birth to several little war gods for Ares, which played a big role in the Battle of Ragnarok. Moreover, in order to humiliate Hephaestus, Ares imprisoned him and even dragged Aphrodite to perform erotic dramas in front of him many times. What kind of man is this? Can you bear it? Therefore, Hephaestus hated this man so much that he felt particularly angry after crushing Ares' head and then crushed him again. Then he looked at Dane. What do you mean? Although he lost his mind for a moment when he just saw the head, but after venting his anger, his mind returned. He understood that Dane could kill Ares, so he could also kill him easily. This is just a meeting gift. Dane crossed his arms and said, Hephaestus, I hope you can do something for me. If you are willing, I can lift your seal. Eleven Hephaestus was silent. Dane's statement did not exceed his expectations. The only thing worthy of praise in him was his skills as the god of craftsmen. But he was a little confused at the moment. His favorite thing to do was to help Aphrodite make exquisite jewelry, but Aphrodite betrayed him and fell into the arms of Ares and finally died. His next favorite thing was to build magnificent palaces for the gods and to create more powerful and sophisticated weapons, but the gods also fell in Ragnarok. Later, he was imprisoned here by Ares, and no one could get close to him. He relied entirely on his hatred of Ares to support him until now, Otherwise, he would have gone crazy long ago. But now that his enemies are dead and his friends and relatives have left him, Hephaestus can't find the meaning of continuing to live for a while. Fortunately, Dane had considered this situation beforehand and took out Ares's battle axe so that Hephaestus could see it. He also made this axe, so he knows this weapon very well. Even Ares himself doesn't know this weapon better than him. So when Dane took it out, Hephaestus could almost see at a glance that the soul of Ares resided in the battle axe, but this soul was muddy and seemed to have no will of its own. Hephaestus's eyes flashed, as glaring as lava, and his big head tried hard to move in front of Dane, staring at the axe. Yes, I think you can see that the soul of Ares is imprisoned on this battle axe. If you agree to my conditions, Ares inside will be yours. I promise you. Hephaestus' voice was like a bell and he agreed at this moment. Dane was also decisive. He threw the battle axe out. The power of the god of war wrapped around the battle axe and cut off the surrounding chains. When the last chain broke, Hephaestus finally got out of trouble. He couldn't help but raise his head and roar. Its sound penetrated the volcano palace and echoed throughout Devil Island. Hippolyta, who was working, raised her head and glanced solemnly in the direction of the volcano. It's the voice of Hephaestus. She had seen this god of craftsmen more than once in the era when gods and humans lived together. Many of the precious weapons of the Amazons were also made by this god. It's just that the volcano temple was a forbidden area set up by Ares. They have been unable to enter it for thousands of years, but now Dane has entered it. I don't know if this is a blessing or a curse for Amazon, Returning to the palace, Dane did not take back the battle axe, but left it with Hephaestus. I have handed over his soul to you, and he has become an idiot now, so you can deal with him however you want. 
As for this battle axe, I hope you will melt it down and make a new weapon. By the way, do you know how to process the ninth metal? Hephaestus gave him an affirmative answer. As long as I have the materials, I can make anything you want. This is his pride as the god of craftsmen and the god of fire. Very good, I will find that piece of metal as soon as possible, and you can prepare to open the furnace. This volcano is not only the energy source for Hephaestus to maintain his divine power, but also his furnace. He is the god of fire. Wherever there is fire, he can obtain the basic energy to maintain his existence. He is also the god of craftsmen. As long as there are ores, he will not lose this godhead. The volcanic land just met his need to maintain his divinity, so Hephaestus did not want to leave the palace after regaining his freedom, and he did not want to see the Amazons, the creations of Ares. At the moment he stared at the axe of Ares in his hand, thinking about how to control him. Suddenly he asked, Can you restore his sanity? Dane glanced at him in surprise, and when he saw the fire of hatred burning in his eyes, he understood the meaning of this request. So he said nothing, and once again used the gift of life to modify the god of war's sanity, but still sealed his magical knowledge, habitually playing a safe hand. After regaining his senses, Ares instantly screamed, Hephaestus, you are out of trouble. Hephaestus opened his impotent mouth, and his jagged teeth and gaps between his teeth as black as carbon ash made him look very evil. Ares see, Ahmed to be able to meet his own end, and he screamed again, No, you can't do this. Dane glanced at it and lost interest in reading any more. I won't disturb your game anymore. Remember what I told you. Hephaestus waved it off as no problem. As a god of craftsmen who creates countless magical weapons for the gods, he knows many kinds of enchantment magic, and his treasure chest also contains many tools for soul transformation and processing. Dane turned around and left. At the palace gate, he could still hear the screams of Ares' soul. Only he could hear this sound, and it was quite noisy. But considering Hephaestus's grievances for so many years, he didn't blame the other party for disturbing the people. Back at the Amazon palace, Diana and Zatanna were watching the excitement around the magic crystal ball. They were mainly watching Barry fall in love with a girl. Who said that goddesses don't follow dramas? Isn't it quite fun to do so? I'm going out for a trip. Do you want to go with me? Diana thought for a while and said, I want to stay at Amazon, and I have a hunch that they may play some role in the future. When Zatanna heard what she said, she thought for a while and said, Since Diana is staying, then I will stay too. Otherwise I'm afraid those Amazons won't be able to survive. Diana's training intensity is indeed a bit high. Went to train superheroes. She was a little dissatisfied. They are too lazy. If they can't handle this level of intensity, how can they deserve to be called Amazon warriors? Diana must have asked the Amazons according to the standards of Artemis or Big Barda. Let alone them, it would be difficult to find a few warriors in the whole world who could compare with those two people. Please give me flowers. Dane understood her thinking. Since you are not going, then stay here. If you have anything, you can contact me through the magic box. Wizatana and Diana nodded. As they watched, Dane flew into the clouds and disappeared directly into the sky. Tell me, will he be here? Diana frowned slightly. No way. There is no woman here who is worthy of him. Zatanna turned her head and looked at Barry in the magic crystal ball, but pointedly said, That's not necessarily the case. Dane couldn't hear the two of them murmuring. He was flying in a certain direction, which was exactly the direction Zansha fled. The crime syndicate was unable to find the hidden Zanza, but the magic of Devil Island kept an eye on him, allowing Dane to discover his hiding place. In Beach City, Hal felt that he had integrated into the city. Although he did not get along very well with Martin Jordan, Jessica seemed to have changed her mind about him. He doesn't know why, maybe out of pity or other emotions, he hopes to change people's impression of Hal Jordan. On this day, Hal unknowingly walked to the place where Carol lives. You can't blame him. The two places he is most familiar with in Beach City are his home, and here. Hal didn't want to see what he didn't want to see. If Carol was different from his impression, he felt that he would go crazy, so he turned around and walked away. But by coincidence, Carol happened to be driving home from Ferris and saw him. Hal? Carol Chi said. 
This Hal Jordan in this world has completely unrequited love for Carol, so there is no romantic relationship between them. And because Hal Jordan once stole the trade secrets of Ferris Company, he was almost beaten to death by his boss Ferris. How dare you come back? Carol got out of the car and looked at Hal with her hands on her hips. She felt that she hated Hal Jordan. He obviously had high flight ability, but was as timid as a mouse. Hal didn't understand what she was talking about, but he knew that whatever Carol was saying, it was definitely not to him, but to another Hal. So he said, you got the wrong person, and wanted to leave. However, Carol then laughed and said, Don't you even have the courage to face me now? I thought you would be more talkative after becoming a power ring. Hal turned his head in surprise. Power ring? Carol raised her head arrogantly. Do you think I can't recognize you after you change into tight clothes? Your temperament is so special, I can see through it at a glance. She and Hal met in the company almost every day. She knew very well about this man's wretchedness and cowardice. In the past, she hated such people because they were from completely different worlds, world people. But it was different after Hal got the power ring. Even though Hal put on the power ring, he still looked at Carol with such disgusting eyes. This is why Kaming was able to discover that he really won. The reason for real identity. But Ferris wants the power ring, and Carol also wants to study the power of the ring and wants to use Hal so that Ferris and his company can reap greater benefits from the ring. For this reason, Carol doesn't mind giving Hal a little sweet taste. This is why she will get out of the car specifically to talk to this loser today. For the sake of profit, she is willing to pay a little bit. Sacrifice. I think you must have misunderstood. Hal still said this, which made Carol feel dissatisfied. Just as she was about to say something, she noticed that Hal across from him suddenly raised his head with a serious expression and looked at the sky. Carol looked along his line of sight and found a man floating in the sky. That was a divine power ring. Caro, there is something wrong with the state of the divine power ring, and he seems to be a little confused. Carol was a little confused. She glanced at Hal beside her and said in disbelief, You're not. No, obviously I'm not. Hal smiled. This smile was confident and sunny. It was indeed not a smile that the man Carol knew could show. It even made Carol's heart beat faster. Carol, I can't take it anymore. I need you and I want you now. The divine power ring seemed to have really lost its mind and rushed directly towards Carol, apparently wanting to kidnap her directly. Careful. Hal almost instinctively reacted and rushed forward, protecting Carol in his arms. With a boom, the divine power ring passed by them, crashed into the cement ground, and exploded into mountains of rubble and dust. Chapter 324 Night Owl's Suspicion Why? Carol was still a little dazed in Hal's arms. She had always been confident in her own judgment, but she didn't expect that she had misjudged him. Among the rubble on the side, the power ring walked out of the broken concrete pit, staring at Hal closely. Who are you? Shenley Ring hadn't noticed just yet, but this person actually looked exactly like him. I'm Hal Jordan. You lied. I am Hal Jordan, the power ring roared. Although he is very timid when facing Speedmaster and others, in front of ordinary people, he is extremely arrogant and domineering, almost arrogant. He pointed his power ring forward, and several venomous snakes appeared from the green light, crawling towards Hal. Hal held Carol in his hands. The power ring didn't want to hurt her. He wanted to get this woman intact. Hal quickly hugged Carol and retreated, nimbly avoiding the green light snake's attack. He looked at these animals with a frown, which looked very similar to the ability of the light of will. Carol hid deeper in Hal's arms with some fear. She raised her head and glanced at Hal. You won't let me go, right? Never. Hal replied subconsciously, and then immediately realized that the woman in his arms was not his Carol. There was something strange in Carol's eyes. The interaction between the two of them was completely seen by the divine power ring, and he was almost going crazy with jealousy. The ring glowed with an even stronger green light in his hand, and a giant mammoth appeared standing on the ground. As soon as this prehistoric animal appeared, its huge amounts of weight crushed the road. The mammoth's trunk flicked and its roar shook the entire neighborhood. The surrounding vehicles controlled the 150 and kept hitting the mammoth. 
they were crushed by him one by one, and the broken bodies were squeezed out from the gaps in the carriage. Screams and wails came one after another. No! Hal was furious. He put Carol down and wanted to rush up immediately. But Carol grabbed him. While he is blocked by others now, let's get out of here quickly. Hal turned his head suddenly, with an expression of disbelief on his face. Carol seemed to be evading, not daring to face Hal's burning gaze, and could only whisper, this is the only thing we can do. However, Hal firmly rejected her. No, we always have a better choice. He broke away from Carol's hand. Carol, I am not only Hal Jordan, but much more than that. I am Green Lantern, and my duty does not allow me to turn a blind eye to evil. After saying that, Hal turned and left, leaving only a retreating figure. Carol stood there blankly, looking at Hal's leaving figure in a daze. This man was definitely not the Hal Jordan she knew. Hal ran towards the power ring and took out the green light ring from his arms and put it on his hand. The green light ring felt Hal's strong will and emitted an extremely shining green light, illuminating almost half of the sky. Green Lantern is born from green light. The divine power ring was horrified, but the power ring in his hand felt a familiar power and began to go berserk. The power of the evil spirit quickly eroded the arm of the divine power ring, like a centipede crawling under his skin, causing him to let out an uncomfortable wail. Green light flashed in the mammoth's eyes, and he raised his two front feet high and stepped on the green lantern. Green lantern formed a shield and withstood the mammoth's stampede. Then the shield shapeshifted and turned into a crane, and the mechanical arm clamped the mammoth's head and lifted it. Green Lantern manifested a rocket launcher in his hand, pulled the trigger, and the rocket flew out, blasting the mammoth into nothingness. The divine power ring was affected by the aftermath of the explosion and flew out on its back, but Green Lantern chased him in the direction in which he flew away. No, don't! When the divine ring saw Green Lantern chasing after him, he put his hands in front of his face and waved around, unable to even make any tactical moves to counterattack. Green Lantern was not polite either. He grabbed the battle suit of Power Ring, and a finger tiger emerged from his other hand, hitting Power Ring hard on the face, causing him to spurt out a mouthful of blood. Seeing how brave this fake was, the Divine Power Ring became even more frightened. The more fearful he was, the more energy the Power Ring had. After a while, the ring burst out with a strong green light, sending the Green Lantern flying. Its huge amounts of shockwave even destroyed the surrounding buildings. Some huge amounts of billboards fell from high altitude and were about to hit pedestrians below. Countless screams rang out, attracting Green Lantern's attention. He quickly dropped his divine power ring and flew in front of the crowd as fast as he could, manifesting his big hands to catch the billboards. It's not safe here anymore. Get out of here! Green Lantern shouted to the people on the road, but those people just pointed to the sky in horror. Hal looked up and saw that it was the divine power ring rushing down ferociously. Hal controlled his giant hand to mash the billboards into a ball, crush them into an iron ball, and then throw it towards the divine power ring. The divine power ring caught the iron ball and was about to throw it towards the crowd again, but at the moment Green Lantern had already rushed up and flew higher into the sky with the iron ball and the divine power ring. After they left, the pedestrians hiding around the building came out shakily. What on earth is going on? Why are there two divine power rings? No, they are different. One of them is protecting us, someone said. Those pedestrians thought about it carefully and realized that it was really the case. One of the divine power rings seemed not to care about their life or death and wanted to kill them all together. The other one would rather give up on his opponents and choose to save them. Do you think the other one is not a divine power ring at all? Then who do you think he is? The man couldn't answer. Green Lantern. Carol got off the car at the moment. She watched the two green light spots disappear into the sky and emphasized to the people around her again, the other person is called Green Lantern, you should remember this name. Because he is the true Asgardian of this city a true hero. Hal pushed the iron ball and the power ring to the sky above the ocean. The divine power ring punched down, shattering the iron ball. After that, Green Lantern manifested a huge amount of drill bit, 
which continued to fly upward against the Divine Power Ring's chest. The Divine Power Ring screamed, but the ring remained unmoved. Instead, it took the opportunity to reveal a poisonous insect and pricked his arm hard in the blind corner where Green Lantern could not see it. Hal was in pain, and the drill bit that appeared collapsed. Under the urging of the ring, the Divine Power Ring could only attack Green Lantern, but his fragile combat power could not be compared with Hal, and he was thrown into the sea by him. At this time, Hal began to realize that this Hal seemed to have no fighting will, so it should be impossible to make such exquisite operations and grasp the timing. He suspected that the ring was controlling the person rather than the person controlling the ring, which was also the case in their universe. In the Sinestro Corps, many defected Green Lanterns were controlled by the Yellow Lantern Ring. Therefore, the way to deal with this kind of opponent is also very simple. Just rush towards the Divine Power. We are no match for him at all. I don't want to fight, I will die. Quan's ring flashed at high frequency, seeming to be scolding him. However, the will of the Divine Power Ring is extremely weak. No matter whether the Power Ring reprimands him, his fear of Green Lantern only increases. He didn't even therve ink about it. With the kindness shown by Green Lantern just now, he probably wouldn't kill him at all. When the Green Lantern flew towards him, the Divine Ring had no intention of fighting and turned around and ran away. However, the conflict between the Divine Ring and those who wanted to continue to work bought Green Lantern time. He rushed towards the Divine Power Ring and something like a cannon barrel appeared on his arm, completely covering his arm. The Divine Power Ring thought it was really a hand cannon and felt even more fear in his heart and his will to fight was even lower. But he was not as fast as Green Lantern. Hal quickly flew up and locked the cannon barrel in his hand to the arm with the ring on the power ring and placed his arm inside the cannon barrel. The Divine Ring could not see what happened under the cannon barrel, but he prepared for the impact fearfully. He felt that the Divine Ring should be able to ensure his survival, but he thought wrong and nothing happened in the end, except that he felt something leaving his hands. It's the Ring of Power. No, it's mine. Even a coward like the Divine Power Ring has an untouchable reverse scale, and the Quan Ring is his reverse scale. He grabbed Green Lantern ferociously, but after losing the ring, his power disappeared instantly. He could not continue flying, so he fell directly towards the sea. This feeling of powerlessness turned into fear again and gripped his heart, making him almost unable to breathe. The power ring turned back into a mortal. Green Lantern holds the power ring in his hand, and the bewitchment of the power ring lingers in his ears. It is very similar to the yellow lantern ring. This is a ring that can lead people to corruption. He sealed the power ring in his own ring world without hesitation, without cutting off its connection with the real world. Then he caught the falling Hal Jordan and brought him back to Beach City. At the crime syndicate headquarters, Nightall received a message from Beach City. The power ring was defeated, he frowned. In this message, he saw that a Superman with the same ability as the power ring defeated him and sent him to the police station. Police station? Why police station? Night all is very strange. When did Superman leave his opponents to the police control guys? The news shows that the ring of the divine power ring has been taken away. The Martian flew in from outside the door with a solemn tone. Ye Xiao put down the information in his hand. What? Have you also received this news? Martian nodded. Not just me. Others must have received it too. The guy who defeated the power ring was a bit strange. He seemed to be cooperating with the government. Oh, Ye Xiao became a little interested. He actually believes in the government. That's not entirely true, but he did hand the power ring to the police station in front of everyone, but in exchange, the government seemed to have concealed the true identity of the power ring. Ha, interesting. What's even more interesting is that our people found a person with the same ability as Johnny Quick in Central City. He is very fast, very fast, maybe even faster than Johnny Quick. Hearing this, Ye Xiao emphasized, same ability? Martian nodded, same ability. After a moment of silence, Ye Rong suddenly asked him, where are you? Martian shook his head, no one like this has appeared yet. 
Ye Xiao thought about the sudden malfunction on the plane a few days ago and became a little suspicious. It seemed that there was an invisible black hand controlling everything behind the scenes. I have to go back to Gotham. Ye Xiao stood up and walked out the door. Martian's voice sounded at the moment. Do you know something? Ye Xiao paused in his steps and turned his head slightly. What do you think? Then he got on his invisible plane and left here. On the road, Night Owl, still thinking about the connection between these events. What hap? Paned in Beach City and Central City is by no means isolated. The two Superman classes have the same abilities as members of the Syndicate in this world. If you don't consider clones and the like, then there is another possible explanation. They come from a parallel world. Alfred accidentally entered a parallel world and discovered the news about the counterpart of the Syndicate in this world on the other side. Nightall had already known about it, but he just hadn't told the other members yet. He instructed Alfred to infiltrate and destroy that world, but because of the special mission, they could no longer contact him until they succeeded. To be honest, this plan is Ye Xiao's most uncertain plan so far, because all processes are not under his control. The only person he controls is Alfred, and Ye Xiao has him. The secret forced him to obey his 5.8 orders, but that was in another world. If Alfred could really bear to abandon everything here and stay in that world, then Night Owl actually had no good way to control it. Cut him. But the information he received today made him aware of a possibility. That is, the other party can also discover their conspiracy and use this plan to invade their world. Perhaps it was because Alfred's description of that world was so beautiful that Night Owl actually lost his most basic vigilance. But this is just one of the guesses. The reality may not be what he thought. Maybe it is just some other enemies shaking their syndicate's rule. Maybe it's the government. Maybe it's sporadic resistance organizations in various places. They may also have some special ways to reproduce the abilities of some members of the syndicate. This is not impossible, after all. Zansha has escaped, and they can't find where this man is now. He can take away the power of others, or maybe he can do the opposite, giving power to others. But Ye Xiao believes that these conjectures will be clear as soon as he returns to Gotham City. He has such an intuition. On the other side, Dane flew up upwards and soon broke out of the atmosphere and escaped the Earth's gravity. Here, Dane's speed power can be used at full power without worrying about accidentally injuring others. When his speed reached a certain limit, his body turned into a bolt of lightning and finally fell to the moon, leaving a new lunar crater here. Dane walked out of the crater and sensed that there was a force on this planet. Apart from Zansha, no one else would stay in this place. Chapter 3 and 25, Abnormalities on the Moon When Dane sensed Zansha, Zansha also sensed him. Zansha and Shazam, these two powers are likely to have some internal connection. When Zansha found that there was only one enemy, he was not afraid and immediately flew towards Dane. He was hiding in this place not because he was injured or afraid of the syndicate, but because on the moon, he could better observe the situation on the Earth. Once a new Superman class appears, he can immediately see it and return to Earth to kill those people and take away their abilities. It turned out that he had already found a super ability person in Central City who showed the same ability as Johnny Quick. It's just that Zanza already has the speed type super ability, and his speed is not much different from Johnny Quick, so he is not in a hurry to get the Superman type ability. He wants to look for it again to see if he can find it. Single Syndicate Member But now that a new guy has appeared on the moon, he doesn't want to pick him. He will kill this person first. Barry didn't know that he might have saved a small life by accident. Zancha's flight speed was very fast, and the moon dust kicked up along the way, spread to both sides like a waterfall. The moon was very small, and it didn't take long for Zancha to find Dane's location. But he didn't slow down. Instead, he put his hands together and rushed toward Dane, hoping to greet Dane. Dane also wanted to try out Zansa, so he summoned the power of Hercules and Atlas, and opened his hands as if to catch the opponent. Arrogant, Zansha thought angrily, and then his body hit the target. Dane was knocked into the earth by huge amounts of impact force. Since the atmosphere on the moon is extremely thin, almost equivalent to none, 
Zanx's power did not form a secondary offensive. The surface of the moon is very soft, so when Dane slammed backward into the moon's interior, he felt like he had hit a ball of cotton. He could not feel any pain at all. On the contrary, the fist that Zanza hit him felt more powerful. Zansha pushed him deep into the core of the moon. Deep in the core of the moon, some metals appeared to be in a molten state. The strong magnetic field attracted the lightning in Zansha and Dane's bodies to rush outward. At this point, Dane finally started to fight back. He pinched Zansha's wrists with both hands, opened them with force, raised his big foot, and kicked Zansha, 24 kicking him into the metal lava. Zansha raised his head from the molten metal river almost instantly. He raised his hands and pointed at Dane, and the surrounding liquid metal attacked Dane. The melting temperature of the lunar core is not high, but it is still over a thousand degrees Celsius. Fortunately, both of them are gods, so they are not afraid of such high temperatures at all, and even use the molten metal to fight water battles with liquid gold. Dane raised his hands, and thunder erupted from his hands, hitting Zansha directly. However, the thunder then turned into an energy rope in Xansha and crashed into other sharp parts of the rock formation. When Xansha was about to get up, Dane quickly flew forward and stepped on his chest with both feet, almost making Xansha unable to breathe. Then, Dane opened his bow, left and right, and punched Xansha hard on the face with two fists flashing with thunder and lightning. Each punch shook the moon's surface with constant waves. If someone was observing the moon at this moment, he would definitely find something abnormal about the moon at the moment. But Zanza didn't just take the beating. He held onto the boxing frame and withstood every attack from Dane, gradually accumulating the force he exerted. When Dane realized something was wrong and stopped, the energy accumulated by Zansha reached the critical point and turned into huge amounts of explosions that pushed Dane away. In this lunar core, Countless molten metals turned into Zansha's accomplices and exerted power on Dane. Even with the power of several gods in his body, Dane was thrown upside down by the huge amounts of force and broke through the moon's mantle, causing a huge commotion. An astronomical telescope saw it, and the face of the moon exploded. As soon as Dane stopped in space, Zansha had already chased him out of the moon core. His speed was incredibly fast but Dane discovered that he could only be faster than himself when his feet were on the ground. It should be that I got the power of super speed from a Superman who also uses the power of speed, but it must be both feet on the ground. However, this ability has shortcomings when used on the moon. The moon's gravity is too low, and it will easily rush into the universe with a little force, so this speed-related force cannot be exerted at all. It can be seen that the super ability at this speed is not as good as the speed force. Xantha also discovered this shortcoming, so he wanted to move the battlefield to the Earth. But can Dane do what he wants? That must be impossible. So he dodged sideways, letting go of Xantha's attack, and then seized the opportunity to grab Xantha's ankle and threw him back to the moon, but he didn't get what he wanted. After Xantha stood firm on the moon, he flew up again and fought with Dane where they just broke out of the ground. Some red and yellow molten metal floated in the space like balls of liquid flames in the void. Float. As they fight, not only the surface terrain of the moon is changing, but its core is also becoming more unstable in the aftermath of the battle between the two. The distance between the Earth and the moon is very close, and the delay of light is no more than a second at most. Therefore, Many national astronomical observation centers have observed abnormal conditions on the moon. Scientists from the United States National Radio Astronomy Observatory, Green Bank Observatory, and Thor Intelligence in Space all discovered changes in the moon at about the same time and quickly reported the matter to NASA. Incredible. What do you think caused this? In these astronomical observation institutions, the lunar surface is clearly changing every moment and the hot lava like a volcanic eruption has been clearly photographed. In a vacuum-like environment, these lavas cannot dissipate heat, so they are clearly observed by human thermal radiation observation instruments. In NASA's command room, some scientists were baffled by this situation, but there was also an official soldier among the top brass of NASA. 
he said in a low voice with a cold face. Based on your professional knowledge, is it possible that this is a natural phenomenon? Absolutely impossible. There are no active volcanoes on the moon at all. Those things have been extinguished for billions of years. The scientist shook his head. The soldier still had a stern look on his face. You know what? If it's like what you said, then if the moon is not invaded by aliens, there are some strange Superman types causing trouble there. The scientist hesitated and said, Isn't it possible? If such a huge amount of observable disaster was caused by human beings, then how powerful that person would be. I am afraid that even our most powerful nuclear bombs cannot destroy him. What difference does it make? Anyway, we can't rely on those things to eliminate any Superman class now. The soldier's voice lowered again. Unless we are willing to make some sacrifices and let those damn guys see our determination. The scientist carefully took a few steps away. He felt that the soldier was a bit dangerous. The soldier noticed his little move and just sneered. It is because of people like you that they can be so unscrupulous and the United States suffers such humiliation today. Speedmaster didn't know what happened on the moon because a layer of dust clouds had enveloped his metropolis and he never looked up during the day. Even looking at the blue sky through a layer of clairvoyance would make his eyes feel painful as if they were being burned so he knew nothing about things on the moon. He has been searching everywhere on the earth, but he only thought that Zansha was hiding in a place exposed to the sun, but he never thought that the other party was always above his head. He only needed to raise his head to Toza. However, Ye Xiao was busy investigating Gotham and had no time to manage this matter. Martian is as Buddhist as ever. He almost doesn't care about anything except waiting for his younger brothers to collect protection money like a pensioner. Zansha? Who is that? Sea King is currently treating his eyes in the deep sea. After losing an arm, he unfortunately lost another left eye. Now he can only use some Atlantis steel to fill the missing part of the left eye to pretend to be an eye. Still there. He gnashed his teeth in hatred towards Zansha, but as much as he hated the other party, he was also afraid of the other party. Just as the Super Queen despised, the Sea Overlord had lost his courage. He did not dare to face Boya alone. At the moment, he wanted to avoid Zansha. How dare he go outside to look for his whereabouts? Instead, he was worried that Zansha would take the opportunity to come and cause trouble for him. Johnny Quick has heard some rumors recently. It seems that a new guy has appeared in his hometown Central City recently. It is said that he has the same ability as him and often performs chivalrous acts in the city. He was a little doubtful, so he wanted to go over and have a look. In the past few days, he had been wandering around Central City, trying to see if he could meet that guy. Both of them are super powerful people with incredible speed. Logically speaking, based on their walking distance, this Central City is as clear as their own garden and they should be able to run into it within two steps. But Johnny Quick has never met the person in the legend. He couldn't help but have some doubts in his heart. Could it be that someone was spreading rumors and trying to intimidate him in this way? He couldn't help but sneer. Even if there was another speedster with the same speed as him, he would kill him. There can only be one fastest person in the world. The reason why Barry was able to avoid Johnny Quick's search was because Xiao Shen helped him monitor Johnny Quick's whereabouts. Little Flash is a super artificial intelligence jointly developed by Dane and Cortana. It is like a dimensionality reduction blow to the network of this world, so Johnny Quick was noticed by Little Flash on the first day he entered Central City and it discovered the source of Johnny Quick's speed through its own powerful computing ability. His speed also seems to come from the speed force, but he is only a user of the speed force and has no deep connection with the speed force. Not only that, Xiao Shen also discovered that Johnny Quick's speed had gone astray. He seemed to think that his speed was given by a certain four-dimensional space. For this reason, he also used a wrong formula to describe this speed phenomenon. As a result, his speed is actually limited. So, do you mean to say that he is not as fast as me? Barry felt confused after hearing Xiao Feng's analysis, so he said this. Xiao Shan replied, As far as the results are concerned, yes, 
I just want to look more professional. Barry said distressedly, You clearly know that I am not a professional in this field. With all due respect, you should know that only if you know more can you be faster. You don't think that you really just need to run, right? Barry had a headache. He had no choice but to continue reading with his head down. According to Xiao Shen's request, since he had entered university, he should take advantage of this and learn about space. Iris was right next to him, looking at him and smiling from time to time. The Super Queen still stays in the lair of the crime syndicate. She has no special way of entertainment and only likes to find stronger opponents to PK. It's a pity that, t there are very few people in the syndicate who can match her, and most of them fall down after being unable to block her three punches and two kicks. So she could only stay here and see if the base's satellite would make any new discoveries. The criminal syndicate has several artificial satellites of its own, which is where superpower takes advantage of Kaim. The ball was placed when it was shady, and it was used to monitor abnormal superpower signals around the world. Recently, due to the rapid expansion of the syndicate, the time for the base to sound the signal has become less and less. The existing Superman species in the world have either been killed or absorbed by the syndicate, and there are very few wild Superman species left. The Super Queen has not heard the alarm sound 027 for several months. She used to feel annoyed when there was a mission, but now she feels that if there is anything that can make her pass the time, the next time is also good. I don't know if he heard her wish, but the base's alarm sounded at this time. Super Queen is the only member in the base who is still staying in the base, so she naturally received this information. Let me see, the signal is coming from the moon. The Super Queen raised her eyebrows slightly. She thought of Zansha, who had been unable to be found recently, and suddenly thought that he might be hiding on the moon. This is most likely a blind spot for their search, because Zansha can hide on the back side of the moon, so unless Speedmaster stares at the moon with his clairvoyant eyes, he can't be found at all. This fool is actually smart sometimes, the Super Queen laughed, and then she opened the intelligence intercepted from NASA, and then saw Zansha and Dane fighting. Shard traces left behind. An experienced Super Queen can tell that this is the damage caused by someone fighting on the moon. There is someone who can fight to such an extent with Zansha. Who is it? The Super Queen's eyes gleamed brightly, and she became extremely curious. It is well known that the Super Queen is the most bellicose and will join in the fun wherever there is a fight. So she couldn't wait to put on her uniform and then walk towards the hangar in the base. Although the Super Queen can fly and survive in the air, her flight speed is not very fast, at least it is very slow in the universe. If we were to fly up in the flesh, it would probably take several days to reach the moon, and by then, the battle would be over. So she was going to fly up in Night Owl's spaceship. She heard that this plane was in space and only needed to accelerate in an hour to reach the moon. The Super Queen only hoped that by that time, it's not all done yet on the moon. A few minutes later, the hangar door in the base opened, and a shuttle fighter jet rushed into the sky at an incredibly fast speed. Night Owl did not brag. An hour later, the fighter plane did arrive at the moon, and under the guidance of the fighter plane, the Super Queen found the location of the lunar disaster discovered by NASA, Square. Then where are you next? The Super Queen flew out of the fighter plane and looked around for both sides of the battle. Soon, she felt the moon was shaking, and the feeling was extremely strong. The Super Queen's expression changed, and she hurriedly avoided it. Suddenly, a shadow burst out of the moon and tore apart the surrounding Earth. The Super Queen had no choice but to fly up into the air and leave the moon's surface. The gap caused by the earthquake gradually widened, revealing the abyss inside. The cracks gradually expanded, and after a while, huge amounts of spider-shaped canyons were formed. Hello, ma'am. Who are you? The Super Queen heard the voice in her head and quickly looked up. A tall figure was floating in the air, holding the half-dead Zansha in her hand. This figure is none other than Dane. Chapter 326, Super Queen. With this face and this highly recognizable outfit, Dane recognized it instantly. Isn't this the Super Queen? How did she get here? 
The battle between Dane and Zansha lasted for more than an hour, and the fight was quite hard. In the middle of the battle, he discovered that although controlling Zansha on the moon could limit his movement speed, at the same time, because of the environment of the planet, he could not use sound to deceive Zansha's power. The power of Shazam is the same as the original power of Shazam. It requires the owner of the voice to speak the spell loudly in order for it to take effect. Therefore, on the moon with a thin atmosphere, it protected Zangsa from losing his power. Because of this, Dane fought a head-to-head -head battle with him, and in the end, he was superior and defeated Zansa. But even so, Zansha only fainted temporarily and did not die. He didn't kill this guy. He still didn't know if Zangsha died now, whether Zangsha's power would leave directly or be absorbed by Dane. The Super Queen looked at Zansha, who had become a dead dog in Dane's hands, feeling solemn in her heart. With all the members of their syndicate working together, they were able to suppress him, but now they were single-handedly defeated. Dane turned his gaze away and focused on the Super Queen's fighter plane parked in the sky. This must have come from Night Owl's technology. He carried Zansha and flew towards the fighter plane like a bolt of lightning. The Super Queen's expression changed. She didn't want to fly in the universe for several days before returning to Earth, so she threw her submission rope and placed it precisely on one of Dane's arms. In an instant, a sharp pain spread throughout Dane's body, as if it wanted to use pain to make him surrender. He frowned slightly and looked back. The Super Queen was trying to pull him over with both hands. Dane held Zansa with one hand and wrapped the thorn-covered rope around his arm several times with the other hand. At the same time, the power of thunder was activated. The divine power in his body was conducted along the yielding rope and hit the Super Queen directly, causing her to freeze instantly. Then Dane exerted force on his hand and pulled the Super Queen over. The Super Queen wanted to open her mouth to speak, but she forgot that she couldn't speak in this place. Dane had no intention of talking to her now. He wanted to quickly figure out how the power of Zansha worked. So he took advantage of the fact that the Super Queen was frozen and unable to move and tied the submission rope around her at super speed. Now, the person who suffered torture became the Super Queen. But this woman was also tough. Even though she was in extreme pain, she remained silent. Her beautiful eyes stared at Dane with murderous intent, as if she wanted to eat him alive. But Dane didn't think there was anything scary about this face at all. He cast the magic of confinement on the Super Queen, making it impossible for her to break free of the rope of submission with brute force. In the golden age of DC Comics, the mantra was once Wonder Woman's weakness. Although it was her weapon, it was often used by enemies to tie herself up, and it even became a joke. As the Super Queen who corresponds to Wonder Woman, she seems to have picked up on this joke. Dane smiled and looked at the Super Queen who was speechless and could only grin. He couldn't help laughing. He stretched out his hand and pinched the Super Queen's face, which made her confused. No man has ever dared to treat her like this. So she struggled even more fiercely, but under the influence of magic and the rope of submission, her efforts were all in vain. Dane stuffed her and the unconscious Zansha into the fighter plane. The space inside was large enough for three people. He drove the fighter plane back towards the Earth. The return time was shorter than the time it took the Super Queen to go to the moon. The gravity of the Earth helped the fighter plane save time. After entering the atmosphere, Dane deliberately lowered his speed to minimize the fire caused by air friction and avoid being noticed by more people. He found an uninhabited sea area and parked the fighter plane on the sea. Opening the cabin door, Dane dragged Zansa out of the fighter plane. The Super Queen still stayed in the cabin, but she could see Dane's movements. I saw Dane holding up the still unconscious Zansha using magic in his hand and lit up a white light at Zansa's throat. Dane pinched the white light with his hand, as if holding a tangible object, and then he threw the object into his mouth like a jelly bean. When he spoke again, the Super Queen was surprised to find that it was Alexander Luther's voice, and she had a terrible thought in her heart. Dane quickly verified her idea. He raised Zanza high above his head and shouted, Mazadal! There was a loud rumbling sound, and a black lightning fell from the sky, fell on Zansha. 
and knocked him back to a mortal. Alexander Luther also woke up. He found that his divine power had disappeared, and he was terrified. But when he wanted to shout the spell loudly, he found that he could not say a single syllable anyway, and he lost his voice. The Super Queen looked at this scene in shock. It seemed that Night Owl's guess was right. The word Xantia was Luther's fatal weakness, but he was not the only one who discovered this weakness. The man in front of him not only found Xansa's weakness, but also took away his voice. Now Luther can no longer transform, but Dane threw Luther aside as if there was still something unfinished. The Super Queen felt strange at first, but then her eyes widened as if she had thought of something. I saw Dane continue to look up to the sky and shout, Xansha! The black thunder appeared again, and Luther immediately reacted and wanted to move forward to accept the thunder and lightning. But unfortunately, he is only a mortal now. When he heard the sound of thunder, it was already too late. The black thunder hit Dane directly. Just like Dane received the power of Shazam for the first time, the power of Shazam gave Dane an energy initiation, and the surging divine power was absorbed by every cell of Dane. The battle suit on his body has also changed under the influence of Xantia's power. The color of the battle suit has turned black, and there are more metal armors on it, such as shoulders, chest, forearms, waist, calves, etc., all covered with unknown black metal. Dane was a little doubtful. These were pure end metals. When he fought Xantia just now, the metal in these parts was too hard to move, and the magic power on them had little effect. If he hadn't spent more than an hour relentlessly hammering this guy's face with physical means, Dane doubted that he might have been able to break through this metal protective gear for the rest of his life. He remembered that Zanza had killed Hawkman's peers in this world, so he probably snatched Hawkman's end metal and spliced them into his own body. But if this is the case, it also means that Zansha does not know how to smelt end metal correctly, otherwise it should be golden. With the current situation, it is obvious that these building guards have not really brought out the characteristics of end metal. The power of Zansha is a power that can be plundered by different people. Every time it changes to a new owner, its voice password will be updated. This update requires the death of the previous host before it can be executed. In other words, if Alexander Luther dies now, then the power of Zansha will only recognize Dane's voice. But before that, its activation code was Luther's voice. When Dane obtained this power, the power of Zansha had already informed him of this matter, as if it was encouraging him and the previous host to fight each other. This guy is a bit dishonest. Who the hell are you? While Dane was thinking, the Super Queen couldn't sit still in the cabin. She desperately wanted to find out who the man in front of her was. My name is Shazam. Dane turned around and looked at this femme fatale who was famous in the syndicate. He stretched out his fingers and untied the surrender rope from the Super Queen. He originally thought that the Super Queen would attack him first, but the woman's reaction was beyond his expectation. The Super Queen's eyes flashed red, and two red energy rays spurted out, but the target was not Dane, but Alexander Luther. The ultra-high temperature and impact instantly wiped away Luther's body, and even a trace of the residue was submerged by the surrounding sea. Dane frowned slightly, and he activated his clairvoyance, which was one of the abilities that Zanza absorbed and now belongs to him. And at the moment of Luther's death, the voice code of Zansa's power was updated, and now he has completely become the new master of Zansa's power. But Dane didn't feel too happy. He frowned and looked at the Super Queen. What are you doing? As you can see, I am cutting the grass and roots. The Super Queen dispelled the heat vision in her eyes, and at the moment she was not as hostile as she was on the moon. You said your name was Shazam, right? No matter who you are, you killed Shazam, and you are already qualified to join our team, the crime syndicate. Anyway, they and Zanza have already become enemies. When the Super Queen sees Luther in this state, her first goal is to completely eliminate this guy who has become an enemy. Besides, he has now lost the power of Shazam, so he is completely useless to the Super Queen. On the contrary, the new man named Shazam who appears now is more to her liking. He was able to defeat Zansha before he took his power. 
Now that he has plundered the enemy's power, he must be stronger than before. The Super Queen doesn't know if there is any man on this planet who is stronger than him. Even the entire criminal syndicate combined may be far behind. However, facing the Super Queen's invitation, Dane shook his head and withdrew his clairvoyance eyes. Don't get me wrong, he didn't activate this ability for peeping, but to see if the Super Queen was pregnant. He took a quick look just now and found no sign of a bed in the other woman's uterus, so she was probably not pregnant. In other words, the Super Queen has not had a secret affair with Zansha like in the comics. I'm quite interested in your team, but it's not because I want to join you, so you don't have to work hard to recruit me. The Super Queen felt something was wrong. She pretended to be casual and said, Then what do you think of us? Dane asked back, Do you know what the people think of you? The Super Queen felt something was getting more and more wrong. She quietly prepared for battle, but still held on to a trace of fantasy. Are you on the side of those mortals? I'm on the right side. The Super Queen activates instantly. Her fighting skills were originally trained on the Earth, so fighting here, her strength is completely different from that on the moon. However, this doesn't mean much to Dane. He could play with the Super Queen before, let alone now that he has the power of Xantia. Therefore, he caught the fist, swung by the Super Queen with one hand, and the shockwave exploded the surrounding seawater, pushing the fighter plane parked on the sea far away from the waves. However, the Super Queen felt that the man opposite her was like an insurmountable wall. No matter how many times she swung her fists, they were all caught by those fleshy palms. If it weren't for the changes in the surrounding environment, she almost thought she had lost all her strength. The Super Queen's eyes lit up red, and her heat vision spurted out a beam of high heat energy. But Dane caught her heat vision with his palm before the beam hit him, then pushed back and grabbed her face. Compared with Dane's palm, the Super Queen's cheeks are very small, and are almost completely covered by the palm, but Dane didn't have any sympathy for her at the moment. He grabbed the Super Queen's head and threw her out. The water floated extremely far away, and the splashes on both sides were hundreds of feet high. Falling on the water at such a speed is basically the same as falling directly on the concrete floor. Fortunately, the Super Queen has a strong body, but even so, she was beaten to a point of dizziness. You should know that you can't defeat me with your ability. Dane still stayed in the same place, like a good tree that has existed here forever, motionless as a mountain. Then why don't you just kill me? You obviously have such ability. After the Super Queen finished speaking, she continued to charge forward to attack Dane, whether it was fists, kicks, or energy attacks. She even used her precious divine power to create a small energy storm at close range of Dane but he still couldn't shake Dane's body. In terms of attack speed alone, the two were no longer on the same level. When the Super Queen gets angry, panting but still about to continue attacking, Dane finally grabbed her hands. If she continues, she may become the first god in history to exhaust herself to death. That's enough. Stop. What's wrong? Are you tired? The Super Queen made a provocative look, which reminded Dane of Diana. No matter which world the Wonder Woman is in, she seems to have this spirit of never giving up. I believe that if it were Diana, she would have fought until she fell. Well, the same would be true on another battlefield. Dane knew this well. You didn't even think about killing me, did you? The strength of the Super Queen's struggle suddenly dissipated, and her hands were swung in Dane's palms. Okay, I'll admit defeat, okay? Dane was surprised, but still let go. The moment he let go, the Super Queen suddenly rushed forward and hugged Dane's neck. Dane thought she wanted to strangle her or something, but that didn't help him either. But soon he discovered that he was wrong. The Super Queen had no murderous intention. Dane felt something imprinted on his mouth. He could have refused, but why? But then he found that the Super Queen began to take things a step further and wrapped her two long legs around his waist. This was not suitable for children. Is it going too fast? Chapter 327 The Resistance Army In the Sewer After Dane returned to Earth after completing his circle, Night Owl finally returned to Gotham. He was so familiar with this city that he didn't need to contact anyone to see that she was different from before. 
Someone touched my city, Ye Xiao said in a deep voice. He was almost certain at the moment that outsiders had brought people from another world here. He quickly analyzed that if everyone in the parallel world has a corresponding peer, then the people who are still staying in Gotham and making changes here should undoubtedly be members of the Wayne family. Judging from the intelligence results sent by outsiders before, there is a man named Bruce Wayne in another world who is the heir to the Wayne group. Bruce Wayne? Yashao fell into a brief memory. He had not heard this name for a long time. At the moment, when he thought about it again, he was not as angry as he imagined. Instead, he felt a little nostalgic. He wanted to see this person. This is his brother in another world. Let me see what you can do, my brother. The moment Night Owl's fighter plane entered Gotham, Batman had already received the news. His intelligent program has taken over the city's network, and now the root servers here are under his control. And not only that, he also has some authority over the commercial satellites owned by the Wayne Group. This is because these key equipment are now unguarded. The person who originally helped Night Owl manage these things was Claw Dick, but now he is missing, and even Batman can't find him. Just like he also couldn't find the Red Hood, people from the Bat family are always good at hiding. As for Night Owl, he made no excuses. He was the master of this city, and he came in openly. Batman's current location is in the sewers of Gotham, where the Jokers are based. Because Gotham is close to the sea, in order to cope with severe weather such as tsunamis and typhoons that may occur at any time, her underground drainage system is made extremely wide, almost like another world. A few years ago, under the leadership of the anarchist hero Jester, the Jokers occupied Gotham's underground network, further expanded and transformed it, and now it has become an underground maze. Even the power of the Owl Court cannot penetrate here. Night Owl once investigated this place, but he found that if he wanted to explore this place clearly, he might have to pay a very high price. Jokers can rely on their familiarity with the Ten Inn here to set traps everywhere, but Night Owl has to spend one precious claw after another to help him make thunder, which is not cost-effective at all. If Dane saw it, he would exclaim, Isn't this the legendary tunnel battle? It is a good tactic to use against enemies whose equipment is much stronger than your own. If he wants to completely eliminate these pests, Night Owl can't blow up the entire city with one bomb. Leaving behind a ruin is completely meaningless to him. Therefore, he thought of a way to lure the fool out. After the two parties had been entangled with each other for a long time, Ye Xiao falsely claimed that he could sign a treaty with the Rigoletto, to agree on each other's territory, rights, and responsibilities. Although Gotham City was not liberated, this was already a milestone victory for the fools. Everything is always difficult at the beginning. Although they knew there were risks, for the sake of the possible peace, Jester agreed to Ye Xiao's request after much thought and came to the ground to sign a contract with Ye Xiao. But what they didn't expect, or what they expected but couldn't believe, was that the Night Owl killed the fool the moment he walked out of the underground maze, directly breaking their previous agreement. The death of the leader of the organization made many senior Joker's officials furious. They lost their minds and just wanted to fight to the death with Ye Xiao, but they were surrounded and killed by Ye Xiao, who was well-prepared and led his claws. It was also at that time that the Court of Owls established its majesty, after losing the leader Jokers, Jokers lost more mid-level and high-level forces in this battle, and Night Owl also achieved his goal. He can't kill all the Jokers, but he can destroy their faith and turn them from so-called rebels into gutter rats. He stigmatized these former heroes and turned the Jokers into another gang organization in the eyes of the people. This made it extremely difficult for them to recruit new members in the future, leaving only the last group of veterans hiding in the sewers on one's last legs. Ever since Jester was tricked out of the underground maze by Night Owl and killed, the Joker's power has been shrinking here for a long time until Batman's arrival. Batman is a very patient person. He followed his usual style and entered the underground maze alone. This maze has countless entrances. Basically, all sewers in Gotham City can be entered directly, but there are not many exits. 
Even Night Owl and his claws, who once surrounded and killed Jokers, did not find out how many exits there were in the maze. They could not find even one. This is why Jokers can survive to this day. Even so, it does not mean that there is no one guarding the depths of the maze. In fact, in order to prevent anyone from accidentally entering the base, there are always patrols in the maze. If it is an ordinary citizen who accidentally enters here, they will first conduct publicity to see if it is possible to develop that person into one of them. If not, they will send the innocent citizen out, and if they can, they will proceed to the second step of verifying the person's identity. If there is no problem with the identity, then Jokers will have a new member who finally appeared. But if the person's identity is found to be a spy, he will be executed on the spot, and the body will be burned and poured into the sewer and finally into the sea. Batman's trip is actually a bit risky because his identity cannot withstand investigation at all, but it is obvious that he does not care about such dangers. With the help of technology and intelligence, Batman went deep into the maze and was getting closer to the exit. And as expected, he met a person patrolling here. You call it a coincidence, he was an acquaintance. Who are you? Bane was wearing a mask and his voice sounded a little buzzing. In this world, many original villains are actually decent people, and Bane is one of them. After the death of Fool, he and some of his remaining companions worked together to maintain the now precarious resistance organization. I want to see your leader. Batman didn't answer Bane's question, but made a request. This made Bane unhappy, and he said, I'm the leader here. Batman stared at him for a while before shaking his head and saying, no, you're not. Bane in the original world was big, but he was a big thinker, but this one is just big. Bane felt a little angry when he heard his tone, but he didn't take the lead because he knew that his companions had already arrived. Beside Batman, the concrete wall suddenly exploded, and a huge amount of crocodile rushed towards him, instantly hugging Batman with his arms. It's the crocodile man. Bane sneered. I'll explain it later. What the hell are you? But before he finished speaking, Batman had already started to fight back. He stepped back with his heel and kicked the crocodile man in the egg, causing him severe pain. Then Batman opened the other man's arm and escaped from control. Bane was shocked and hurriedly stepped forward to help, but Batman suddenly grabbed one of crocodile man's hands and threw him out, hitting Bane, and the two rolled into a ball. I have no intention of fighting you, so can we stop? Batman stood there and put his hands into his cloak. Bane and the Crocodile Man are both very angry. You beat us both and now you want to stop? You think so damn well. Is is also Batman's own fault. He was used to getting along with them like this in another world, and he didn't react for a while. It was completely a conditioned reflex. Wait, I'm not looking for trouble. You fucking do. Bane moved away from the Crocodile Man and rushed directly towards Batman. In this world, he is also an excellent warrior, so every move is extremely fierce. And like Bane in another world, he has the power of Superman enhanced by Venom. But it's a pity that what he met was a strengthened version of Batman. The battlesuit he wore could even be touched by a Kryptonian in a short time, let alone a strengthened and flat Bane. So Bane quickly fell into a disadvantage. This was because Batman didn't want to hurt him too badly and was merciful, otherwise Bane would never be able to resist for so long. The confused crocodile man on the other side recovered and hurried over to help, but Batman took out a batarang from his body and threw it out, inserting it in front of the crocodile man. Immediately afterwards, huge amounts of sound waves sounded throughout the sewer, and the crocodile man fell to the ground instantly with pain on his face. Bane was also stunned by the sound wave, but Batman found an opportunity to subdue him. He put Bane aside, then picked up the flying darts stuck on the ground and melted them back into the battle suit. But at the moment, ten pistols were pressed against the back of Batman's head. Don't move. Raise your hands. Stand up slowly. It's a woman's voice, Batman thought. Although he was not afraid of bullets, he was not here to cause trouble, so he raised his hands as requested by the person behind him and stood up slowly. I said, I'm not here to cause trouble, I just want to meet your leader. We don't have a leader here, the fool has been killed by the night owl. Batman wanted to turn around, 
but the person behind him stopped him. Don't move. Maybe we can talk in person. The person behind him seemed to smile, and then a voice came again. If you are willing to take off your mask, then I can face you face to face. Batman thought for a moment, and suddenly nanoparticles flowed down his helmet, revealing his true face. This is not his Gotham, so hiding his identity is not a necessary option. If this can win the trust of this organization, this deal can be done. The person behind him seemed a little surprised. After a moment, Batman felt the gun behind his head leave the back of his head. You can turn around now. Batman turned around after hearing this and was stunned when he saw the other person for the first time. Selina. The woman in front of her is Catwoman Selina, but she is no longer wearing her cat suit, but a leather uniform that has been stained with countless dust. Even so, it still did not damage her appearance. Catwoman frowned upon hearing this and raised the pistol again and pointed it between his eyebrows. Who are you and why do you know my name? She was very sure that she had never seen the man in front of her before, nor had she seen this face before. Batman introduces himself. I'm Batman. Bat? Okay. Catwoman then said, Your real name, be honest, and don't lie. Batman was silent for a while and finally said, Bruce Wayne. Boom, one bullet from Blues. It scratched his ear and scratched his face. Catwoman said expressionlessly, Sorry, my hand slipped. Then more Joker's members came out of the depths of the maze, and Bruce saw some familiar people inside. The Riddler, Scarecrow, Two-Face, Penguin. These are all people without super abilities. They survived the Night Owl's purge. Question 1. Assuming you are not lying, why does the dead Bruce Wayne appear here? Question 2. If question 1 is true, are you and Ye the same person? The Riddler stared at Bruce and looked up and down. Jokers and Ye Xiao have been fighting for so long, and their true identity has long been figured out by them, but even so, they can't Dao owe anything against each other. The additional identity of Thomas Wayne Jr. only makes him more troublesome, because they will find that the other party has no flaws and all his family members are dead, so they will not be threatened in any way. But the man in front of him calls himself Bruce Wayne. Could it be that he is not actually dead? So what can he bring to the Jokers? Bruce raised his mask again and then answered everyone. My true identity has been told to you and now I want to hear your thoughts. What are you going to do? Deal with night owls. You think we would tell you such a thing? The Wayne family are trash. The bronze tiger in the crowd roared and rushed forward as if he had a deep hatred for Batman. Wait. Catwoman suddenly stopped him at the moment, causing Bronze Tiger's attack to get stuck in the middle. If it weren't for his good skills, he would have been smashed into pieces at the moment. Catwoman, what are you doing? Catwoman looked at Batman for a while and then said, What you just said, can I understand that you are standing with us? Batman nodded, you can think so. Everyone looked at each other, and Scarecrow asked the most important question, how can we believe that you are not a spy sent by Night Owl? Because I sent a gift. Batman's voice remained steady. Everyone can feel the same temperament as Ye Xiao from him. The Wayne family are all freaks. Many people cursed in their hearts and at the same time felt an inexplicable fear. Catwoman didn't feel that way. Maybe she caught the flash of surprise in Batman's eyes when he first called her name. She always felt that the man opposite her knew her, not just an ordinary acquaintance, and that they might have a more in-depth relationship. It was strange, and this prevented Catwoman from being hostile to him. You said you had a gift. Where is the gift? As soon as Catwoman finished speaking, the sound of something heavy falling to the ground sounded from behind everyone. Everyone looked back and saw that a man had appeared on the ground at some point. His whole body was tied up, and he was motionless. The penguin walked up on his short legs and turned the man's face to the light side. It's Alfred, Night Owl's lackey. From the shadows, the Red Hood walked out, following Batman. Penguin is actually a good person. This world is really magical. Chapter 328 Because we are the Justice League, Hal has been a little troubled lately. Although he solved the Divine Power Ring, he seemed to have gotten into a bigger trouble. You should know you can't hide from me forever, Hal Jordan. Outside Jordan's house, there was a high-level supercar parked, 
and a beautiful urban beauty was standing at the door with her hands on her hips, talking. On the other side of the door was Jessica Jordan's teasing look and Hal's embarrassed expression. He couldn't carry it for a long time and could only say, What? What do you want to say? Jessica half smiled. The voice sounds nice, so she must be good looking, right? Why don't you meet her? It's okay if she doesn't say it, but Hal gets a headache when she talks about it. If he were single, he would definitely be happy to hear about it, but he is not. He already has his own Carol, and he should not provoke another one. But this Carol is not that easy to deal with. Although there are slight differences in personality between her and her counterparts in the other world, they are almost equal in terms of persistence. Therefore, when Hal Jordan decided to hide from her, Carol chased him to his door instead. Now Hal couldn't ignore her anymore. He couldn't let people keep shouting like this at the door, right? After all, he had the same face as Carol, so Hal couldn't be really cruel, so he could only open the door with a helpless mood. As soon as he opened the door, he saw Carol's smiling face with bright eyes and white teeth. I knew you would come out, right, Green Lantern? Hush! This is a secret identity. Do you know what a secret identity is? Carol quickly and carefully covered her mouth, but her curved eyelashes showed that she was in a happy mood, and Hal couldn't tell whether she listened to her words. So, what do you want from me? Carol rolled her eyes and immediately changed her tone. Hal Jordan, you should correct your attitude. You are an employee of Ferris Company. I am your boss. You should respect me more. Huh? Hal scratched his head. Why, is Carol also his superior in this world? No, but I. Nothing but, as an employee, you can't refuse any orders from the boss. Come on, come with me. With that said, Carol took Hal's arm and walked out. Hal didn't want to leave, but couldn't think of any good way to refuse, so he could only be pulled away by her. So Hal, with the neighbors watching, bravely got into Carol's supercar, as if he was being taken care of. This feeling became even stronger when Carol took him to the supermarket for shopping. In his world, Carol also liked to take him shopping, and she always bought things for him. It's over. The feeling of being taken care of is getting heavier and heavier. Just when Hal was following Carol with large and small bags, he suddenly realized that the things bought in these places can be delivered directly to the place of use. Could it be that Carol asked him to mention it on purpose? Um? Suddenly, Hal frowned and looked at the sky. What's wrong? Carol has been observing Hal, her eyes never leaving for a moment. I'm afraid I have to leave for a while. He was suddenly stunned when he said this. He vaguely remembered that he had said similar words in front of Kazun. What's the matter? Carol reacted immediately as she asked, lowering her voice and whispering, You're going to be a hero again, right? Carol's voice sounded very excited, which was different from his Carol. The other Carol would only worry about his safety. He's getting closer. Hal frowned even more tightly. He saw a yellow light spot approaching quickly outside the atmosphere. This color was too familiar to him. It was the color of a yellow light. Carol, stay in a safe place, Hal said, stuffing everything in his hand into Carol's sports car, then turned around and left. Wait, Carol couldn't stop him and she couldn't keep up with her wearing high heels. She could only watch Hal disappear arar, round the corner. Hal walked into the alley, made sure he was in no man's land, and put on the light ring. He didn't dare to wear the green lantern ring on his hand ostentatiously here, as it might be recognized by others, so he could only wear it when he needed it at any time. After putting on the ring, it instantly transforms into green lantern, turning into a green light and rising into the sky. It didn't take long for him to penetrate the stratosphere, and he met the yellow light group on the clouds. When Hal saw the person's face clearly, he subconsciously raised his hand and aimed the ring at that person, Sinestro. The person who came turned out to be Sinestro, but Hal did not attack rashly, because here, Sinestro is not necessarily a villain. Sure enough, when Sinestro saw him, he asked tentatively, Are you Hal Jordan? Yes, I am, Hal replied. Sinestro, what did you want to do when you came to Earth? Sinestro looked at him for a long time and then suddenly said, No, you are not Hal Jordan, at least not the Hal Jordan of this world. Hal was shocked. He didn't know where he was exposed, 
but without clearly distinguishing between ourselves and the enemy, he still did not launch an attack. He just stared at Sinestro without speaking. At this time, Sinestro raised his hands to signal Hal not to get excited. Relax, buddy. I'm not your enemy. On the contrary, I'm here to help you. Hal was dubious. Before that, answer me a question. How did you know that I am not from this world? Because of your ring, Sinestro explained. In this universe, green light is not the power of will, but symbolizes the power of the ring. But your ring and the ring are completely irrelevant. The symbol of the green lantern ring is a green lantern, while the symbol of the Quan ring is righteousness, and the two powers give people completely different feelings. Hal also felt that although this Sinestro still used the power of yellow light, he did not seem to feed on fear. Yes, you should feel it. The ring in my hand is different from the yellow light of fear. It is a ring that I reforged after overcoming the enslavement of the power ring. I have to say, the me in the other world brought me a lot of trouble. Because of his destruction, I almost couldn't find anyone to reforge the ring. Sinestro from the original universe was so easy to kill on the Kovad planet in this universe that he almost killed all the weapon masters and enslaved the entire planet. And the army he brought back to the positive matter universe was almost completely wiped out in the battle with Dane. If it weren't for some sporadic weapons masters surviving on Kovad, the Sinestro in front of him might not be able to escape the control of the ring. After listening to Sinestro's story, Hal gradually put down his hand. He intuitively felt that what the other person told was the truth, and he was not willing to fight with this person. If in the positive matter universe, the person who fought Sinestro at that time was Hal, assuming he could win, then the possibility of him leaving Sinestro alive is very high, but unfortunately, Sinestro meets Dane. Then continuing with the previous question, why did you come to see me? You should have come to see me, right? Sinestro nodded. Yes, I am here to convey bad news to you. Planet OA has noticed you and will probably come to arrest you after a while. Capture me? Star OA? Why? Hal was surprised at first, and then he suddenly realized, Star OA here is not a peacekeeping organization, right? That's right. They are conquerors, and Earth is their chosen next place to conquer. Why this time? Hal thought this was too much of a coincidence. He had just grabbed the power ring, and the OA over there decided to invade the Earth. Sinestro explained, It's because you defeated the power ring, the Hal Jordan of this world, and conquering this planet should have been his mission. It's just that there are many people in the Syndicate who are stronger than him, and the Divine Power Ring is also very cowardly, which leads to his delay in completing his mission. If he had any guidance, he said. In fact, after the failure of the Divine Power Ring, the Power Ring will continue to look for the next suitable candidate, and then transfer the task to the next person, but I think you must have used some method to seal it stand up. Hal subconsciously glanced at the light ring in his hand, and his eyes widened. You mean, because I sealed the ring, the evil OA in this world is preparing to invade this planet? Then wouldn't he have gotten into a big trouble? Sinestro saw his thoughts and comforted him. Please don't think that I am blaming you for saying this. In fact, even if you don't do that, Quan Ring will always find a way to achieve its purpose. You are just... It just speeds up the process. Even without you, the next host chosen by Quan Ring will most likely find a way to summon the legions of Planet OA and let them come over. Please give me flowers. You have sealed the Power Ring, which has actually delayed the progress of OA to some extent. They are now unable to locate the Power Ring here. This is why Sinestro previously believed that it would take some time for Planet OA to find the Earth, because they still had to find out which ring was lost. The loss of the Power Ring is a very common thing in the Divine Army of OA Planet, because there are always people who want to monopolize the power of the Power Ring. Those people will quietly leave the team and find a primitive planet that no one knows about to become gods and ancestors. The person who wears the Power Ring will be given the ability of immortality by the Power Ring. Definitely, the premise is that he can resist being completely eroded by the Power Ring, Otherwise, his lifespan will not be long. All in all, if the side effects of the power ring can be overcome, 
then a power ring holder can survive on an indigenous planet for thousands or even tens of thousands of years. This is enough for him to control a planet and its surrounding galaxies. It is also enough for this divine power ring to develop the technology of a primitive planet to a whole new level. However, according to the experience of O.A. Star, most holders of power rings will not let the civilization under their control develop technology too high because it will easily affect their dominance. Although there are few divine rings that have been overthrown by people from indigenous planets using technological power, it is not impossible. This also makes many civilizations controlled by divine rings generally in a lifeless and lifeless state. Sinestro has traveled to many planets, and Earth is already the most dynamic world he has ever seen. Scientific and technological research here is not prohibited by any force. Zero, he hopes that the Earth can maintain this vitality. The entire universe has been greatly harmed by the divine rings, and their desire for control forces them to continue to expand and continue to eat away at other races and civilizations in the universe. Hal used the technology of the lantern ring to conduct lie detection on Sinestro throughout the whole process, but the other party was sincere, so he chose to believe the lantern. Since the situation in the universe is so severe, I don't think we can fight alone. I have some teammates who are distributed in various places on this planet. I think you will definitely want to meet them. I know them. Unexpectedly, Sinestro smiled at him and said, Unlike others, I sometimes pay attention to the real things. Regarding some things in the qualitative universe, the reputation of your Justice League is still very loud in the universe. Defeating the Sinestro Corps and Steppenwolf's army is a very significant event for other civilizations in the universe. Even though the Earth did not specifically publicize it, these two things were still known to countless civilizations in the universe with the spread of the G. Rien Lantern Corps. The names of the Justice League are also registered in the universe, which also invisibly coats the Earth with a layer of gold. Some forces that are not strong enough therefore stay away from the Milky Way region, for fear of being misunderstood as invaders. By the way, I have a question. I wonder if you can satisfy my curiosity. Hal suddenly thought of the things Sinestro had done on his home planet, Karuga, and was a little worried, so he asked one more question. Sinestro in the original universe was a dictator, so I don't know what he does here. But as soon as Hal finished asking, he noticed that Sinestro had a sad expression. My home planet has been destroyed by OA. I, I'm sorry. Hal didn't expect this result, and he apologized quickly, but Sinestro had long since let go. He waved his hand and said, That's all in the past. I came here just because I don't want the Earth to be like my home planet. It has become a battlefield where those people on OA planet wantonly destroy. Hal, this matter must be informed to your leaders as soon as possible, if you are willing to protect this planet. Strictly speaking, this world is not the Earth of the Justice League. They can completely ignore the threat of planet OA. At worst, they can just leave this world. Moreover, if planet OA destroys this Earth, maybe the criminal syndicate will also be destroyed, and then the crisis on Earth in the parallel world will be easily solved. Speaking of which, perhaps ignoring the crisis on planet OA and leaving here directly would be the smartest thing to do. If it were a criminal syndicate, this plan would definitely be passed unanimously. But Justice League is different. Hal faced Sinestro and said firmly, I am absolutely sure and convinced that my teammates will choose to protect this planet, even if it is not our Earth because we are Justice League 6. Chapter 329, Speedy vs. Speedy. In Central City, Barry seems to be gradually integrating into this parallel world. Some time ago, through the introduction of Iris, he gritted his teeth and made a decision that went against his ancestors. He applied for a fake certificate. This was the first time in Barry's life that he had broken the law, and he felt guilty for it for a long time. But the fake certificate is fake after all, even though the person who made the fake certificate claims that the certificate he made has been filed in the government system. But later, according to Xiao Shen's investigation, that person was completely a liar. The fake certificate that Iris spent about 20,000 US dollars to make was actually just a piece of waste paper. 
If Xiao Shen couldn't stand it anymore and personally modified the system files, Barry would probably have been invited to drink coffee by the police because he was undocumented. As for its contribution, neither Barry nor Iris knew anything about it. Iris just seems to know a lot, but in fact, she may know a little, but not much. Her father is a local American policeman, and perhaps because of this, he protects her very well. She is essentially a naive student like Barry. Barry could hardly tell which world he was in. With the introduction of Iris, he successfully obtained the position of laboratory assistant at Central City University. As an expert in physical evidence technology, Barry has rich theoretical knowledge, so he easily won this position and entered the same university as Iris. He felt a little strange. In his world, he and Iris did not have such a deep friendship. If it weren't for his father and the Justice League, Barry would even think it would be good to live here. The only bad thing was that there were a lot of crimes happening here. He originally thought that since Johnny Quick was from Central City, why would the 640 office take care of these people? But no, Iris told him that only those criminals who were not Johnny Quick's men would be punished by him. But more criminals are actually working for Johnny Quick in private. They are basically a nest of snakes and rats. Did you hear that? Central Bank was robbed again. Barry walked into the laboratory holding the information and heard someone discussing. He was curious and slowed down. Again? The person who heard the conversation couldn't help complaining. Don't tell me this was done by the gang of rogues again. Gang of scoundrels? Barry frowned. In his world, rogue gangs also existed, and they seemed to like to go against him. The Rogue Gang is an organization founded by a man named Captain Cold. Barry doesn't know what the world is like, but in his world, the Rogue Gang is not a completely evil organization. Because although they like to fight against the Flash, they never hurt innocent people. Captain Cold strictly orders gang members not to kill anyone unless absolutely necessary, because this will attract the attention of more superheroes. If Superman is attracted, it's okay, but at worst, he surrenders and goes to jail. But if you are accidentally noticed by Shazam, it depends on whether the horoscope is strong enough. Moreover, the rogue gang later added many rules, such as no smoking, no harm to women and children, avoiding cruel and immature behavior, members of the gang are not allowed to kill each other, and so on. After getting rid of the trouble these people deliberately caused for him, Sometimes Barry felt that the rogue gang could actually become a better organization. Therefore, although he always stands up to destroy the good things of the gang, he respects everyone in this organization. Perhaps knowing this, the rogue gang showed great restraint every time they caused trouble, and no matter how many times they were sent to prison by the Flash, after each escape, the gang would still happily find trouble for the Flash, and only target the Flash. Flash. Barry has been in this world for several Dara D. A's, and this is the first time he has heard information about the rogue gangs in this world. He can't help but want to take a look at those people. He doesn't really want them to become real villains. So Barry quietly walked into the bathroom, pressed his chest, and the flash battle suit unfolded into a streamlined shape on his body. Green Lantern has teased him many times, saying that his battle suit looks like a red supercar, and Barry himself likes this statement very much. He ran out of the bathroom like lightning and set off a violent wind as he ran down the aisle. Countless women in skirts screamed and held down the hems of their skirts. I'm sorry! Barry waved back and apologized, then continued running forward. In just a blink of an eye, the Flash has arrived in front of the Central City Bank, where the gang of rogues is occupying the bank and confronting another group of people in strange clothes. When the Flash arrived, the two sides had already begun to exchange fire. They not only had automatic weapons, but also grenades, RPGs, incendiary bombs, etc. The rogue gang is not here to rob banks at all, they are here to fight. Barry, there are Superman types here. Little Flash projected the identity information of the two warring parties on his eyepiece. This machine speculates that one of the parties is likely to be Johnny Quick's subordinate, it is recommended to retreat immediately. Retreat? Barry looked at the innocent pedestrians at the fighting scene. They were lying on the ground and did not dare to move, 
but stray bullets still hit them from time to time. Barry didn't have any hesitation. He rushed out immediately regardless of Xiao Shen's objection. So on the battlefield, everyone could see flashes of red and yellow lightning lighting up around them. The faces of both warring parties changed at the same time. He's coming. Johnny Quick's men were overjoyed, thinking that their boss had arrived. The people occupying the bank opposite looked solemn. Although they had been prepared, they found that their preparations were far from enough when they faced their enemies. Don't worry, my brothers. Johnny Quick will definitely die here today. Behind these people, a man in winter clothes walked out. He was wearing a pair of blue goggles. He was Captain Cold. At the moment, Captain Cold took out a large, strange-looking gun from his carriage. This is the super weapon he painstakingly invented to deal with Johnny Quick, the cryo gun, which can produce temperatures as low as absolute zero. As we all know, under the conditions of absolute zero, matter is absolutely stationary. According to Captain Cold's calculations, the rays of this gun can even break through the speed force. So it is by no means just an ordinary freezing gun. Their gangster gang has been working hard to overthrow Johnny Quick's rule in this city, so most of the criminals killed by Johnny Quick in this city are also members of the gangster gang. The rogue gang also often raided the lair of Johnny Quick's criminal organization, destroying his goods and killing his minions. It can be said that the two sides have a deep hatred. But when Captain Cold aimed his gun at the speedster running around the battlefield, he suddenly felt something was wrong. That man was saving people. Johnny Quick is saving people? This is really a big joke, so Captain Cold prefers that guy is not Johnny Quick at all. He put down the gun, frowned and looked at the almost continuous lightning on the field, and muttered to himself, there's something not quite right. Then soon he saw a scene that made him stare. Another yellow lightning suddenly appeared in the field, and he suddenly stopped. It was Johnny Quick, but another red and yellow lightning also stopped at the same time. Both the gangsters and Johnny Quick's men were shocked. There were two speedsters? I finally found you, the unknown speedster. Johnny Quick looked at the man opposite and gritted his teeth. He walked around the entire central city countless times before finally taking advantage of this opportunity to catch this guy. Who are you? Why are you in my city? Captain Cold asked his men to be calm. He watched the scene in front of him with great interest. The speedster versus the speedster. This is a good show. But Barry didn't want to fight Johnny Quick. He quietly asked Flash, What should I do now? According to local calculations, as long as you show your strength, you will be far faster than your opponent. So as always, run. When Barry heard the words, he activated instantly and turned into a bolt of lightning and ran away. Johnny Quick thought this was a challenge and followed him. Captain Cold slapped his head. He felt like he was stupid. He should have used the freezing gun to freeze the two speedsters first. But now that the opportunity has been lost, it is useless to worry about it. It is better to take the opportunity to eliminate the opponent's men first. So while the opponent was still dazed, he temporarily put down the cryogun, picked up the RPG, and shot the opponent first. There was a loud boom, and the guys who had been fighting back and forth with the gang of rogues were suddenly blown up into the sky. Captain Cold threw down the rocket launcher and yelled at his men, Ignore Johnny Quick, kill the guy on the other side. So the rogue gang immediately came to their senses and continued to fire towards the opposite side. The other side has just been attacked by rockets, and now there are very few people who can form a fighting force. Those who are sober have already begun to retreat. Those who are not sober in the city have been ganged up by rogues. Order T. On the other side, Barry is running in front. Johnny Quick is chasing behind. Both of them are incredibly fast and can run as long as there is any attachment point under their feet. For the first few minutes, Johnny Quick can still keep pace with the Flash, but as time goes by, he begins to fall behind. In terms of the speed of the competition, if there is a slight difference, it is almost impossible to make a difference. Although Johnny Quick wanted to use some dirty tricks, he couldn't touch the Flash at all, so he could only look at Barry, who was so close and helpless. Although Barry is faster than Johnny Quick, 
He is not a person who is good at taking the initiative to attack, so he just runs forward without attacking the enemy at all. Xiao Shen whispered in his ear, You attack him. Barry just muttered, I don't think it's necessary. According to my observation, your opponent doesn't seem to think so. How could Johnny Quick's little moves be hidden from Flash? He was staring at him at 360 degrees. It saw Johnny Quick take off a weapon from his body. It was a cold weapon. In the Battle of Speedsters, thermal weapons cannot hit anyone at all, unless they are laser weapons. However, laser weapons are not easy to use in atmospheric environments, so Johnny Quick always keeps cold weapons on his body. However, in fact, for speedsters, speed is originally a kind of power, and there is no need for any weapons at all when the number is large. Johnny Quick carries such a weapon with him, which shows that he often uses it to plot against others and has already gained experience. The enemies were already ready to plot against him, but Barry still wanted to avoid hurting anyone as much as possible. Xiao Shen didn't know whether to be pleased with his kindness or to be angry with him. Spend. But Johnny Quick soon diverted his attention and found that his men were contacting him. Now that he can't catch up with the Flash, he can only stop temporarily. In the super speed state, it is impossible for him to communicate with people normally, and the flow of time is different. What's the matter? You obviously know that I'm very busy. But a loud cry for help came from the other side of the earphone. Boss, our people are about to be annihilated by the Hiat Rogue Gang. Johnny Quick briefly learned about the situation on the other side, I find. After passing by, he cursed trash and then started to run back. As for the Flash, he suddenly had another great idea. Since this guy likes to be a hero so much, when innocent people are in danger, will he come back to save them? Just a few seconds later, Johnny Quick ran back to the central bank, and Captain Cold spotted him instantly. He is back, Captain Cold shouted, and all the gang members immediately turned their guns and shot at Johnny Quick, while Captain Cold quickly picked up his cryo gun. Johnny Quick, in a state of great speed, easily avoided all the bullets. When he saw the muzzle of Captain Cold's gun, he sneered, You can shoot a new gun with a 2.2, does the status quo have any effect? However, Captain Cold has already pulled the trigger. This trigger was designed by him to be very sensitive. There is no need to pull it all the way, and the freezing ray will be emitted with just a light touch. Captain Cold designed the ray according to the speed of light, but unfortunately, due to the ability to freeze, its rate of fire is still reduced a lot. So Johnny Quick quickly realized something was wrong and quickly avoided the ray but part of the ray still hit his arm and froze one of his hands. Johnny Quick couldn't feel his hand for an instant. He lost the feeling of this arm, but he also successfully avoided the most fatal blow. The freeze ray cannot be fired multiple times in a short period of time. After all, this is Captain Cold's first trial work, but the results are already extraordinary. You know, for all these years, no one has been able to touch Johnny Quick, let alone hurt him but his good luck seemed to have ended here. Captain Cold felt a little regretful when he saw that he had not fully achieved his victory. He knew that he only had this chance. If he didn't seize it, he would face Johnny Quick's crazy revenge. He was ready to die. Johnny Quick is indeed rage. Although he can't move one hand temporarily, there is no problem with the other hand. So he threw the weapon originally prepared for the flash. With the blessing of the speed force, it was faster than any bullet and arrived in front of Captain Cold's eyebrows in almost the blink of an eye. But just as the weapon was about to kill Captain Cold, the Flash rushed into the battlefield and grabbed it. The arc flashing from the weapon hit Captain Cold's freeze gun, making a soft click sound. Chapter 330 Woman, Please Don't Touch Me Captain Cold was immediately stunned and felt very surprised. Johnny Quick's face became even more ugly when he saw that his sure-kill blow was intercepted by someone, and the interceptor was the opponent who just ran faster than him. Who are you? Why do you want to stop me? Barry introduced himself. I'm the Flash, man, and I think you'd better find a hospital to look at first. Your arm looks bad. But Captain Cold, who was standing behind the Flash, said, No, we can't let him go. You said your name is the Flash? You helped me hold him down. This gun will cool down in a few minutes, 
and then I can kill him completely. When Barry heard Captain Cold say kill him, he quickly waved his hand. No, we can't kill. Captain Cold had a, you're fucking kidding me, expression on his face. He frowned and asked, what if we don't kill him, and he recovers and comes to trouble us in the future? Barry tentatively asked, maybe we could hand him over to the police. Captain Cold sneered and pointed to the opposite side with his finger. You may not know that there are a few snipers among the people opposite. Barry was stunned for a moment and looked at the several men in Johnny Quirk's camp who were wearing regular uniforms in disbelief. They didn't have any police temperament at all. Captain Cold said slowly, Actually, what they are doing now is serious work. Being a cop is just because Johnny Quick needs to have his own eyes in the police station. That is their part-time job. This is not surprising. Even if it is not in this world, in the normal United States, the police station is a mixed bag and people of any identity may appear. Maybe there is a murderer lurking in the police station, committing crimes while investigating the cases he committed. It's just that, unlike Johnny Quick's men, none of them are engaged in crime. Although the officials are aware of what Johnny Quick is doing, they are unable to change the status quo. While they were talking, the skill CD of Captain Cold's cryo gun was full. He immediately raised the muzzle of the gun and took aim briefly before triggering the trigger. 24. But just when he touched the trigger, an electric arc suddenly flashed from the freezing gun, hitting Captain Cold's arm directly and paralyzing him. He let go and the freezing gun was released. Johnny Quick seized this opportunity and threw the second flying darts on his body, hitting the freezing gun in midair. The muzzle of the freezing gun lit up and a blue light seemed to be about to spurt out. But Barry reacted in time and quickly pushed the cryo gun. No! Now Barry's speed was incredibly fast, so he gave the cryogun a gentle push, directly pushing the cryogun into the air a hundred meters away. However, the freezing ray was still activated, shooting randomly in the air as the muzzle moved. Barry immediately activated the speed force and released a large amount of lightning from his body. He ran desperately on the street and moved everyone within the target range of the gun to prevent anyone from being accidentally injured by the freezing ray. But even if the freezing ray does not reach the speed of light, it is still very fast. If he wants to save everyone, Barry needs help. So he looked at Johnny Quick in the speed force and said, do something. He hoped that Johnny Quick could move those people to safety with him, but Johnny Quick just sneered at him, covered his frozen arm and ran away directly. He is now suffering from frostbite, Although it does not affect his running, it still has a great impact on his speed. He has no time to pay attention to the untouchables here. Barry saw that the other party actually walked away, but he was helpless. Barry, if you want to save everyone here, there is only one way. Flash reminded him at the moment. Barry subconsciously asked, How to do it? You have to get faster. Faster than a freeze ray. Barry looked around. Although he had just... T rescued many innocent passers-by who were involved. There were still many people left on the street at the moment. More importantly, the freezing ray has a very long range. Not only the street in front of you, but even several kilometers away, the freezing ray is still lethal. Barry could only do his best. He took a deep breath, changed the mask to a fully enclosed type, and restarted to accelerate. In this speed field, everything around him was completely still. Barry tried his best to move all citizens within range away from the gun. During this process, he also occasionally threw gravel to hit the freezing gun in midair and adjusted its muzzle position to keep it as far away from the crowds as possible. He successfully moved most of the people to a safe place, but even though he did this, the freeze ray was still not finished. Once he exits the speed force, it's still possible for the freeze ray to hit places he can't reach. Xiao Shen, you know what I'm thinking, right? The image of Little Flash flashed in front of Barry. You want to use the lightning and freezing rays generated by the speed force to hedge, but your computer reminds you that doing so will lead to completely unpredictable results. Please consider it carefully. I've thought about it. At this time, Barry's voice became very calm. Xiao Shen seemed to know his consciousness and stopped trying to persuade him. He just helped Barry prepare for calibration. 
Barry rubbed his hands against each other at an extremely fast speed, generating an extremely powerful electric current. He formed a circle with his hands, forming a circuit, and lightning was shot out from the middle. Hit the freeze ray. The two energy flows were in a stalemate for a while, and finally the freezing ray seemed to be unable to follow up, and was finally pushed back by lightning and struck the body of the freezing gun. But then Flash suddenly called the police to Barry. Barry, that gun has a high energy reaction. Retreat quickly. What's the meaning? It's going to explode. You're kidding me, right? Barry looked around. He had just finished everything here. How widespread is it? Xiao Shen did not tell him the specific number, but just said, it's very wide. Anyway, you should get out of here quickly. Unlike others, the Flash's speed is enough to escape from the center of the explosion. No, I can't leave. Barry began to rack his brains to think of a way, but he found that he had no good way at all. Even creating a storm to surround it would not help. Just when Barry thought he could only watch the explosion happen, a beam of green light fell from the sky, and the light turned into a spherical shield completely surrounding the freezing gun. It was Green Lantern who arrived. He controlled the green light shield to limit the explosion inside the freezing gun, then threw it into the sky and pushed it deep into the high clouds. The next second, a huge amount of blue flash lit up deep in the clouds. A large white cloud was turned into a frozen cloud by the blue light. Under its own weight, Chen Yun fell quickly. If you look closely, you will see that this freezing cloud is hundreds of feet in diameter. Once it hits the ground, it will cause huge amounts of damage. However, before Barry could remind him, Another beam of yellow light shot up into the sky and directly hit the frozen cloud. The cloud exploded and turned into countless tiny snowflakes falling down. It was Sinestro, and he came over to help. Hal landed in front of Barry. Not an easy day, huh? Barry was a little embarrassed. If it weren't for Green Lantern's help, he almost messed up the matter. Hal, why are you here? Hal smiled and replied, I'm here to help you. As he said this, Sinestro came back and brought someone with him, Johnny Quick, who was imprisoned in the energy ball by the yellow light. Sinestro set a trap on his only way to catch him. The loss of an arm affected his sense of balance, so he failed to escape the trap and was captured directly. Captain Ice was very happy. When he saw Johnny Quick being imprisoned, he immediately took out a pistol from his waist and pointed it at him. He pulled the trigger and tried to kill this guy first while everyone was not paying attention. But he underestimated Sinestro's energy shield. The bullet bounced off the yellow light and failed to harm Johnny Quick at all. Johnny Quick therefore looked at him with a mocking smile. Sinestro immediately removed Captain Cold's weapon, frowned and asked him, What are you doing? Captain Cold said with certainty, Definitely kill him. He also asked them, Isn't that why you came? Definitely not, we just want to capture him. Captain Cold sneered, then wait until he breaks out of prison and then kill him, right? Barry and Hal looked at each other with subtle expressions. Actually, I think he may no longer be able to do evil. Although we will not kill him, from a realistic point of view, he will die in a social sense. As long as Johnny Quick is imprisoned in the hell controlled by Dane, unless Johnny Quick can break through the dimension, he will be the same as dead in the real world. Captain Cold is doubtful, but he definitely doesn't believe it. There are three Superman types in front of him, and he is just an ordinary person who has lost his weapon and has no ability to resist. Therefore, he could only agree with the way they dealt with Johnny Quick. Although it was a pity that he could not kill him with his own hands, it did not seem unacceptable if it could be exchanged for him never appearing in this city. Sinestro turned to look at the Flash. Is this the Flash you are talking about? Barry didn't recognize this man, so why was his skin red? He scratched his head and looked at Hal. Hal introduced him. This is the new friend I just made, Sinestro. He comes from extraterrestrial civilization and is here to help us. Oh, hello. Barry stretched out his hand. He didn't know what etiquette the aliens had. It wouldn't be offensive to shake hands, right? Sinestro obviously understood human culture very well. He smiled and shook Barry's hand before saying, I have seen the battle you just fought. You clearly have the ability, but you are still unwilling to take the enemy's life. This makes me admire you. 
Captain Cold said, skk, on the side. He felt that if the Flash hadn't interfered earlier, he might have killed Johnny Quick with the freeze gun. So, you are here just to help me? Not only that, I learned that another big event may happen on Earth, so I need to find everyone to discuss it together. Barry, do you know where the others are? When Barry heard this, he immediately asked the battle suit's artificial intelligence, Flash. Twinkle, do you know where Dane is? The members may not know each other's positions, but Dane certainly does. This machine is trying to connect to the host, please wait. On Night Owl's fighter plane, Dane and Super Queen were flying towards Devil Island. The Super Queen is now free from any restraints, and 2 Lord 7 has decided to follow Dane since she surrendered. At the moment, she was sitting in the passenger seat next to Dane, but this femme fatale was not honest and kept teasing Dane with her feet. A pair of long legs swept up and down Dane's thighs, making people feel itchy. Dane was speechless. Can you calm down for a while? Why? The Super Queen is sitting very charmingly, and Dane is sure that she is deliberately trying to seduce him. Obviously we were both satisfied with the kiss just now, and I can feel your passion, but why are you unwilling to go further? She moved her feet to a certain key point with a half-smile. You don't seem to be the type who has hidden diseases or is not interested in women at all. I don't understand why you want to refuse me. Dane stretched out his hand and quietly took off the Super Queen's feet. He is a man, and some instinctive reaction s are uncontrollable. Moreover, if you control it, it may cause some misunderstandings. I already have a partner, and she is an Amazon. There are angels, necromancers, alien warriors, gods, etc. All of them are not ordinary people. Oh, who knew that the Super Queen would become interested instead? Who is it? As far as I know, there should be no woman in the Amazon who is worthy of you. It can't be Hippolyta, right? If that's the case. I'm actually a little excited when I think about it. If possible, the Super Queen would not mind ravaging this nominal mother on another battlefield. Dane could see that the Super Queen in front of him could be not only an S, but also an M. Her hobbies were very flexible and perhaps only the little psychotic Harley could compete with her. Although I don't know what you are thinking, I know that you must be thinking wildly. You will understand who she is when you see her. I guarantee that she will be the same as all the Asians you have met. The Amazons are all different. After what he said, the Super Queen became even more interested. Are there any Amazons she hasn't seen yet? Then she wants to see that the man she likes, even if he is already married, she will still snatch him away. Not long after, the fighter plane stopped at Devil Island. The Amazons who had stayed behind saw the fighter plane. After Dane stopped, a group of Amazons surrounded the place. But as soon as the hatch opened, the Amazons put away their weapons one after another, and all of them knelt down in front of Dane. The Super Queen was surprised that these people didn't seem to see her, but they just saw Dane and paid such a grand gift. What did you do to this place? Dane smiled and said to her, As you syndicate like to do, conquer.